Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Hey, welcome to the day to today's edition of the <laughs> Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Couldn't spit it out there for a second. A uh, lot to get to on today's show. Yesterday is the two year was the two year anniversary of the Browns uh, signing or trading for Deshaun Watson. We're going to play some audio of me reacting one of my last couple of shows on ninety two three the fan reacting the, the news broke. Uh, of that trade, and for those who say I'm a Deshaun Watson hater, because now that's convenient, people say now. That's funny, that uh, It certainly wasn't, the, you know. Do you know why they say that? Because I'm not confident that he's going to turn it around. But it's outside of me, G, yeah. and Earl, I don't think nobody is on this panel. Like Good on this show. Watson's going to turn it around? Yeah. I still think. Like, I think. I think that. I think y'all hope that he will, but y'all yeah. not. If y'all was a betting person, y'all wouldn't. I right. bet against it at this point. See, yeah. that's what uh, I'm uh, saying. Uh, uh, but there's like, I mean, I don't want. But I don't think it's a five percent chance. And and there's levels to it, right? Yeah. Like, do I think he's going to go back to 2020 version? No, I think that's gone. But he could still be a really good NFL quarterback. Yeah, we'll see. All right. right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you think 2020 also, is still in play? 2020 level to Sean. I think it's still in there. Okay. Uh, cause I, but I we just, haven't seen it for three he, years. That's he, the but he has given you glimpses. I don't, I don't believe that. I think he had. I think he's had moments where I was like, he still got it. But I, it I just think, hasn't been I, consistent. I think we're just looking at moments like every quarterback, even the worst guys, have those moments. That's true. Right? Kenny Pickett had moments. I mean, the thing Mike of, White has the craziest one week. Right. Extraordinary game ever Listen, for a historically bad career. The, one, the reason that I'm sitting here today is because of the word consistency. That's I would give. I would go to. I would go to practice and give you some, and cases. be like, "Oh my goodness!" And then the next couple of days, I wouldn't do a thing. So yeah. that, that's wow. why I'm sitting here today. Yeah, well, and that's part of the discussion. <laughs> what self awareness? You know, for a, I was Tyvis and I were both here very early today, and. So was I. 15 minutes. That's yeah, early. Yeah, for you, that's pretty good. Yeah, for you. Um, but, and I was admonishing Mike, Tyvis, Earl, and Anthony for not taking vacation. Rest when you did. And, and Tyvis especially. I stand on This is nuts. Yeah. Tell him why. Tell him why. All right, listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I don't believe in vacation or rest or none of that stuff because... I think that if I take a day off, I'm opening up the door for somebody else to get an opportunity to come in here and replace me. And a lot of people say, well, that's because you was in the NFL. That's 100%. Yes, yes. That, it is. Yes. I'm I scarred it. for in life NFL, because of that. Yes. I'm not missing and I'm not giving up the opportunity. Plus, when I'm in a rhythm, like when I'm really cooking, like when I'm just dropping knowledge and facts, you get into that rhythm and you don't really want to lose that rhythm. You got to ride that thing out. That's and true. I can't take a vacation that, in the middle of that. That's true. Like, because I do that with writing. If, yeah. you, if you go a week or two without writing anything, and it's like, oh man, it's I, hard I, to get back I in the get rhythm. I get it to some degree. If I'm off a day and there's a big story, I'm like, oh damn, I wish I was on to talk about yeah. it. That's what I get. But it's important to have a work life balance and you got a family and they'd like to. Sp- you bull, know, bull. go on vacation when, with you. When I become Jay Crawford and I'm, you don't a, have to be Jay and Crawford I'm a multi-millionaire, <laughs> they will, that, all the vacation stuff will still be there. Time it's is, unbelievable. And most Ten people, years from now, I still be there. When listen, I'm still sitting here doing this show. We Jay's money, but <laughs> Jay's probably made more money than 98% of Americans. Yeah. So if we wait to make Jay Crawford money, most of us will never go on vacation. Yeah, I gotta ask. It doesn't have to be an expensive vacation. Does it mean? I'm gonna ask and, Jay. I'm gonna ask Jay Crawford the yeah. next time I see him. So that'll be in September. How many times when he was young did he? If take I had vacations? a boat to go on, I'd take vacation too. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah but exactly. I All need right. to know thirty year old. No, but Jay. this is important. You got a beautiful little girl. Yeah, take two. her on vacation. You have two beautiful <laughs> women in your life, but you got a beautiful little girl. They, Some of the best memories we have are vacation memories. Take her on vacation. Yeah. My, You've be- my favorite memories is when I come home from here. Yeah. 
and they're like daddy daddy and they like horseback rides so now i'm just running around the house with giving right. them horseback rides. It's, it's great times but it's also important to just get away my going on vacation recharge my batteries i've been in a great Boy, mood since you, I come you, back. you can get all that vacation time yeah. when they put you in the ground well no because you're dead you're just, what are you doing you're not you're you having get, fun catching up dead. on rest yeah. anyway <laughs> we'll leave it there for now uh, but let's start with uh, the anniversary of Deshaun Watson in a second. First, let's go to Mike. What's up, guys? You can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick... Who's going to win it all? Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. All right, guys. So yesterday, uh, two years ago yesterday, the Browns traded for Deshaun Watson. It was a a wild couple of weeks um, as there had been reports that the Browns were interested and then – there was a report that Deshaun Watson had turned the Browns down and it looked like it was dead. Yep. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it came back to life. Let's play the clip. This was courtesy of my show on 92.3 The Fan, the Bull and Fox at the time. This was March 18th, 2022. It was one of my last shows. It was April 1st of 2022 was my last show on The Fan. Dustin was off that day. And by the way, it was great to hear Dustin back on the air yesterday, he came back after a, a long hiatus. So it was good to hear him back on the air yesterday. But he wasn't on that day. I was on solo. And at the time the news broke, I was talking about the Guardians with Mandy Bell of MLB.com. Here you go. Uh, Mandy, uh, I think we have huge breaking Browns news. So I think I got to wrap things up. That's okay. I apologize. Mandy, thank That's you so honest. much. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, we have big breaking Browns news. Deshaun Watson's coming to the Browns. Deshaun Watson is coming to the Browns. I know some people are going to be angry, and I probably shouldn't be excited about a guy who's accused of what he's accused of, but holy macaroni. Oh, oh, what's what's the guy's name? Keith, what's the guy's name in Denver that I, I, I apologized to yesterday stupidly? He said he's never coming to the Browns. Benjamin Albright, you're an idiot, just like I said Benjamin Albright was. He doesn't know anything. I told you I owe no apologies. I take back my apology. Deshaun Watson's been traded to the Browns. Holy moly, what happened? What what happened to all the people that said he's not interested? What happened to all the people that said, no, Deshaun Watson wouldn't want to come to the Browns? Oh, my God, Deshaun Watson is a Cleveland Brown. My gosh. The first one to have it, Adam Schefter. Deshaun Watson has decided he wants to play for the Cleveland Browns in a stunning change of events per sources. Watson has informed the Texans that he is now willing to waive the no-trade clause in his contract to be dealt to Cleveland. Trade compensation still to be finalized with the Texans, but Watson has made his choice. He expects to go to Cleveland. Holy moly! Where, where are all the tweets I got earlier? That the Bra- nobody wants to play for the Browns. Deshaun Watson does, and for the first time in 40 years, 60 years, 100 years, the Browns have a franchise quarterback and will be able to compete with the best of the best in the AFC. Okay, for now on, if anybody says I hate on the Browns or I hate on Deshaun Watson, I'm just going <laughs> to play that clip. There's proof. That was my natural reaction. There was a lot of enthusiasm there. Uh, was I excited? You were very excited. I don't want to hear like nothing Christmas about me being a hater. I don't want to hear that crap. Well, it's not the thing here. I mean, I was a hater on Benjamin Albright because he is one of the ten biggest tools on Twitter. Wow. This guy's a tool bag. Man. That's quite know. a bar. There's a lot of tools oh, on yeah, Twitter. There is. I but, mean, uh, listen, I... Now, now it was a I, great it was a great moment. I think the, like I said, the only reason is because like you were you was all excited yeah. then, but now you're like Kind of down though. Well, how could I not be? He stopped. I, I understand, yeah. but I'm just telling you why people call you haters now. But it's not you, fair. You went from that to like. But it's not. But keeping it real is not being a hater. And you know, in today's society, people can't handle when you keep That's it real. That's true. So there you go. 
Sad. I mean, it was a really good day. I mean, I, I, I always wanted to know, was it the guaranteed money that made him say? Of course. What do you think? <laughs> no, because like, so what, did they go in there with an offer and say, we'll give you $200 million? And then he was like, ah, I'm cool. Then they came back and said, we give you 230 fully guaranteed. And he said, oh, really? <laughs> like, is that how it went? I mean. Because when they asked him about it, he was didn't he say something like, yeah, I met with Kevin Stefanski. And we went over some plays, and I liked his mind and all of those things. All that's true. Okay. They did. Yeah. They were in Rusty's office. Uh, I've talked about it on the show before. They sat there for 45 minutes chopping it up over film. They had an iPad between them. They were going over plays and how they would use them in the offense. That's, that's all true. Okay. And then Deshaun told him no, and then he changed his mind and told him yes when <laughs> they had another zero to the chat. It was, I mean, there's – I don't remember every detail now, but I wrote about this extensively when it happened. And there was something about when, when Carolina was out, the Browns knew they were back in, and the Browns thought they, there was a chance where they could get back in. Uh, Carolina would not guarantee the whole thing. And A.B. had stayed in touch with Deshaun's agent, David Mulligetta, mm-hmm. throughout the day after he was told no, after he turned down the Browns. They stayed in contact on other free agents. I mean, free agency's going on. So yeah. there was other guys that they were talking about. And then the Browns saw an opportunity to get back in, and they took it. Wasn't that the year that everybody was like, go after Jimmy Garoppolo? Wasn't he like a free agent? No, that was – I said that for last year. Huh. Or on the or no, two years ago two years. on the suspension. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, when yeah, the suspension go. was yeah. increased to eleven games. Okay. Uh, I, I thought, I'm, I'm trying to think who was the backup player. Like if it wasn't, it was going to be Baker. You think? So if they didn't get Deshaun, they would. They were going to stick with Baker, 100. percent You think? I mean, he's still under contract. Yeah, he was, still and he had no leverage, none. There were no other options. I mean. I just can't remember. I can't think back. It was an option that other people wanted, but I just can't remember who it was off the top of my head. We, I mean, Russ, Kirk Cousins, those were names Russ, that were being thrown out. That's who it was. Russ they were names yeah, that was kicked called. around. Right. That's who it was. That was. Were you excited when you heard the news about the show? Yeah, absolutely. I was. Listen, I thought about because I when I looked at Kevin Stefanski's offense, I'm like, I'm thinking about the bootlegs, and I'm like, man, if Baker made this work. And Baker's not even mobile like that. Deshaun would be even a bigger threat. And he's right. he's one of the best at the time. He was one of the best deep ball throwers in the game. So I'm like, oh, man, he can really open up this offense and take it to another level. You know, you come out of that play action and you're on a bootleg to have that option to either throw it or run and get the yards. Like for a defender, that's that's putting you in a bind. Like, do I go here or do I stay back? Right. Stay back for smart defenders. You just always play deep to short. But it puts them in that bind. So I thought he would be perfect coming in here. And then suspensions happen. And now he don't want to be under the gun. I mean, he want to play out of shotgun. So it's just been a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of watered it all down. If you would have told me at that time when I broke that news on the radio station that we'd be here two years later, I'd never have guessed this. I... I, if you would have told me what's the worst case scenario with Deshaun Watson, I would never have thought it would be as bad. Well, as you bad. remember when the season started two year, whatever that was, two years ago. We yeah. took a we took a shot. Remember that McNuggets? We, we took, did. We, we were took tired. a shot. I had a shot of iced tea while yeah. everybody else had whatever they was drinking. Yeah. And we t- cheers to us finally having a franchise quarterback. Yep. But I also I, I I was driving home from New Jersey. We were in New Jersey for my wife's side of the family. There was a funeral. Yep. Her grandmother died. We were driving home, and I'm driving down the turnpike on I-80. Yeah. And I saw it on my watch. My yeah. watch buzzed, and I saw the Browns are getting Deshaun. I literally drove off the road. <laughs> literally, I was off the road yeah. and bringing the car back on, and it was like instantly. It was one of those for me, like yeah. life just changed. Oh my like, god, my yeah. life just changed. Hundred percent in terms of all the stuff that comes with it. And really, if we're being totally honest, when they traded for Deshaun, it got worse. The off-field stuff got worse after. Yes, the trade. that's true. <laughs> the well, lot more. Had, it's inf- not about, that it got worse. It's just we learned more. No, details. it got yeah, like more information came right, out, right, right, and right, the yeah. New York Times was it came always out of like, twenty when we when we traded for him? Was it still that many, or did, did the I think the right? number ticked up, but it was already a lot. Yeah, it was a I lot. I just don't think that we there was any details. There was not a lot of details yeah. out, and it was well, the grand jury didn't indict him, right? Yeah. So and that's when the whole thing heated up. For and, him. and yeah, and that's the NFL teams were waiting to see if he was right. going to get indicted. Once he wasn't indicted, once there was a no bill, that's when teams lined up for him. But then even after the trade is when like. 
the number grew to like 50, 60, 70 women coming forward sh- with, with, re- with random accusations against them. Sorry to cut you off, Jason. I, I'm not even sure at the time of the trade if we knew for sure there was going to be a, a lawsuit. Oh, there were, yeah. There was were suits definite? filed. Yeah. Okay. Before that? Yeah. Civil. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yes, okay. <coughs> but, yeah, we didn't know the details, and they started to come out. But, but uh, just on the field. And when the Browns made the trade, yeah. I don't think they ever expected 11-game suspension in year one. No you chance. and I went round and round. Yeah. It was probably the worst show we ever did, and it started off. Yeah. It was just everyone on the panel screaming at each other yeah. for, for 25 minutes. Right. Well, yeah. And, but, but the gist of that was, would the Browns make the same trade if they knew the suspension was 11 games? And I right. said, no, I don't think they would have given up as much had they right. known. But yeah. they, they were operating on the <laughs> assumption, I don't know, no one ever put a number on it, yeah. but they never thought it was going to get that high. They never well, thought I mean, the initially, was that high. the ladies gave them three, right? Or two. What should give them? No. Six. No, it was six. The initial was six. The initial yeah. was six. The initial was six. I thought it was like three or four. Yeah. No. The initial was six, and they changed. The I number. thought it would be six on appeal. It would be knocked down to about four. Yeah. yeah. And then instead, it went. Well, to if the suspension had happened before, it would have been better because then the Browns would have gotten them for significantly less. Yeah. If they had traded for him, yeah. I think the argument was: Would they still trade for him? Not. I mean, obviously, they would have had to give it up less to get him. Right. But, right. Well, anyway, that's neither here nor there at this point, but. Mike, did you want to follow up a question on this? Well, I got a question, but this was actually the first Cleveland sporting event that I specifically knew where I was because I just got hired. Right. And it was just me and Steve Becker. This show wasn't a, had, didn't have a name. Yep. I was still living in Texas. I never met Earl, Anthony, any of you guys. And I remember calling Steve Becker that night and being like, we got to start the show now. Like, yeah. I, I don't know who makes the YouTube channel. I don't know how we get this up. I know I was hired like 12 hours ago, but like we need to be on air yeah. now talking about this. Yep. And since then, you know, that was really the, essentially the start of UCSS in a different route. Yeah. The question I wanted to ask, though, so Tyvis, Jason told us where he was. He almost ran off the road. Bull was on the air. We have visual and, and audio proof of where he was. Where were you when the trade went down? What was your initial reaction? So, and this was B-22, so my... Well, he gave us his initial reaction already. But, but yeah, but where was but he? But where was like, he? As yeah. in the actual moment. Oh, I was at home. I was at home. I was, I remember because I had friends. So, when you, when you play football and you talk to your friend, everybody comes to you because they think you got, like, inside information. Mm, right, so, right, everybody's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I'm telling everybody, like, well, he said he ain't coming. Yeah. So everybody's like, dang, all my friends like, dang, man, we, who do we pivot to? So we sitting there talking about that. And then that comes down and I see it and I send it to the group chat like, oh, my goodness, this man, we got D watch. Huh? And it just was a it was a moment where everybody was just happy. Like, like, don't get me wrong. Everybody was cool with Baker, but it was just like D Watt's game was just better than Baker. Like if we wanted to go to the next level, we absolutely D Watt would be yes. that answer. And a lot of people was fans of D. Watt, but even in the Texas, like everybody was like, "Oh, he's better than yeah. Baker." So when we got well, there was him, no doubt yeah. in terms of talent yeah. between the two at the time. It was, uh, yeah, but yeah. you know, you you ask the Baker bros, that's yeah. a, that's a lie. <laughs> but I just remember everybody being excited about it. But I was at home when I got that. When I seen, I read it on Twitter. Yeah, it's a big moment, big moment, man, man, oh man, man. I hope it pans out. I really do. Well, that's the, that's the question I want to ask yeah. here before we move on to some Jameis Winston, some Stephon Diggs rumors, and the Browns working out another edge rusher. But, Bull, going off your audio, which I heard for the first time this morning, you said at the end the Browns have a franchise quarterback that can compete with anybody in the AFC now. Right. I'm assuming by taking those words you meant the expectation was deep playoff success, if not a Super Bowl, correct? Uh, absolutely. I thought the sky was the limit. And the sky can still be the limit. For, and, in fact, the roster – not only, not only, uh, and that was without knowing what they were going to do with the roster because the roster has been significantly improved in the two years since they made that trade. In fact, I would argue that, forget quarterback, the rest of the roster, this might be, this is probably the Browns' best roster since at least the 80s. Oh, for sure. If not longer. For sure. So, there, so there's no excuse, but I, I could never have imagined Deshaun Watson playing as poorly as he has Never. It never would have crossed my mind. I thought they had a top five quarterback in the bag. You could tell by how excited I was. I thought it was 100% certainty. I never thought for a minute he wouldn't play well. And, you know, obviously he hasn't to this point, And that's, 
uh, a bummer. So two years in, what yeah. would you consider success in this trade then? How has it changed in two years since the aftermath of making the trade to now and what you view you well, personally at, as success? At the time, I thought he was going to be a franchise quarterback, and now I don't. Now he's not. Now, could he get back to it? Maybe. But my – and that's why when people – sometimes people get upset because they'll say, like, well, Baker got this level of, of patience. and I'm, Well, Deshaun Watson came in here – as being a Pro Bowl quarterback. We can't pretend now that we didn't have through-the-roof expectations. Everybody, when the Browns traded for Deshaun Watson, thought you had a top-five quarterback. Didn't you think that? I went into – when they made that trade, yeah. for so long, we had so many question marks about quarterback. You can yeah. go through every position, like, oh, we got somebody there. But yeah. the quarterback has always right. been the question mark. Yeah. When we got Deshaun Watson, I said, that's not it's a, done. That's not – Exactly. That's, that's, not what even everybody a, that's not even a problem. That's anymore. what everybody thought. I'm not going to hold him to the Joe Flacco and Baker Mayfield, uh, you know, level. I'm holding him to the elite quarterback level, and he has played nowhere close to that. So now, two years later – I'm skeptical that he can get back to that. I hope he can. I still give him a shot. But if I had to bet a million dollars, which I don't have, but if I had to bet a million dollars, will Deshaun Watson be a Pro Bowl, you know, legitimate, not like 14 guys have dropped out of the Pro Bowl. Right. Will will Deshaun (laughs) Watson be a top five quarterback ever again? Sadly, if I had to bet, I'd bet no. Now, could he be top 15 again? Sure. But I, I... Right now, I don't have a lot of faith that he's going to get back to that elite status. So when they made the trade, yeah, my expectation was at the time Patty Mahomes was still was becoming the man. He was he, right. at the time. But Sean Watson was the second best quarterback in the league, right? So I thought I judged it off. Can this quarterback go toe to toe with Patty Mahomes? And I think Tom Brady was still playing at the time. Yep. Can he go toe to toe with these guys? And my answer was absolutely he can. I know he had the debacle. When they played the Chiefs in the playoffs yeah. and they ended up blowing the league. Yeah, yeah, all of that. But he showed that he still had the talent to do it. And you asked me today, can Deshaun Watson go toe to toe with Patty Mahomes? And that's where it gets a little hairy because I think he still has some talent to do that. However, what Patty Mahomes has done, it, the Joe Flacco thing kind of messed up a lot because. Joe came in here with the same receiving cores and just went bananas with it. It made it just work like that. And to me, it's like, well, why didn't Deshaun do that? The, you tell the, the true success or the measurement of a quarterback is, can he make the people around him better? And why was Joe able to do that? But Deshaun kind of struggled a little right. bit. So that's where it's a little, it's a question mark. I mean, he needs to figure out why that was the case. Because he had us thinking like, these guys aren't, maybe they're not that good. And then Joe comes in here, and now they look unbelievable. So he needs to get that type of measurement or get back to playing like that to be able to compete with a Patty Mahomes because Patty Mahomes did it with just Travis Kelsey and a bunch of uh, – Travis Kelsey and the guys. I mean, his second best player was a rookie wide receiver. Right. So I want, I want Deshaun to get to that level where he can it – didn't, it doesn't matter who's out there. If it's Cedric Tillman and David Bell, he can still make it work. That's David right. Bell scored three touchdowns with Joe Flacco, so it, it, can, it can work. I think that that's the level that I want him to get back to. And that's where it's like, can he get back to that level? Yeah. I feel like anybody can. If, you, if you've done it before, you've had glimpses and moments. It's just you have to figure out how can I consistently be at that moment. And it's just he's had injuries and the suspension and all of these other things. I just need to see him for 17 games. That's yeah. At this point, I need to see 17 games of what you look like. And then I'll be able to make a judgment because right now, whether you like it or not, it's built in excuses. Right. You had time off, you were suspended for eleven yeah. games. The year after that you got hurt. Like it's you had the shoulder thing, you had the ankle thing. So it's like built in excuses to where I, I can't really give a grade on him because I don't I need to see him for seventeen games to, to truly assess if he's gonna be that guy or not. I am I am a big locker room guy. I'm big on what the guys in the locker room feel, what they think, where are they? We've t- I've talked about it. Numerous time, numerous times on the show. If you're in that locker room right now and you play for the Cleveland Browns, where is your faith level in your quarterback? In Deshaun? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, they they all speak highly of him. They have to. I mean, he, and, and, and I'm not saying they don't believe it. Yeah, like they, they very well could believe they it. But they have, but they're not they going to rip them publicly. True. 
I mean, they just would decline. They just would decline to talk. I don't know. Like, I just think that Deshaun brings. But you a, played the league. You played. You played on defense. I think in the Deshaun. NFL. I think Deshaun brings an energy to the building. Like, I don't know necessarily how great he is, but I know when he's out there, some people, a lot of players, believe in his ability, and because they see it in practice. You know, if he's making these throws, like I told y'all last year, when I went to practice, he was phenomenal. He looked amazing in practice. So that's where the confidence in the locker room is coming from because they've seen it. Now that he's coming off of injuries, it's like, I got to see it again. Like, if I was playing for the Cleveland Browns right now and I was a wide receiver, I'd be like, dude, I got to see it. Like, I need to – we need to – you ain't even started throwing, which I think you set to throw this week. Mm -hmm. Once we start throwing again, I need to see if you still got zip on your ball. Can you still get the ball where I want it at? And then I'll be able to make those assessments. But to your point, it could be, like, murky right now because you don't know what you're getting. I don't know how it's not. I mean, naturally, you have to. Be. Yeah, it's your throwing shoulder. Like. This is such a rare injury among court. It's not like a, it's not a normal, typical injury with a lot of data on guys come back. It's this long as the rehab. They come back and they're fine. Like pitchers with Tommy John, you know, it's going 12 to 15 months. More times than not, they're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. This is so rare. We just don't know. Yeah, we just we, you just don't know. I think that he'll come back with the same type of physical. I still have questions about the mental. Everything yeah, that, that he's that, been through. Right, right. I that was something in my excitement that I never thought about. Yeah, and it seems so obvious now that there would be mental hurdles. Well, for the, sure, the, for him to overcome. the interesting thing is when we had DeAnthony Bell on, he kind of touched on it a little bit, where he was like. Deshaun is a guy who's one of the most locked in guys I've ever seen where he kind of blocks out a lot of the noise and I could see that but he was saying that the more the more years that passes by where he's getting further away from it it's going to be more easier for him to lock in like it's it's impossible for somebody to go through what he went through and not have it in your mind at some point. But as time goes by, it continuously get pushed further back in your mind, and now you're able to focus, which is true. That's very true. So it, it's interesting to see now that it's two years removed, how much further mentally yeah. can he be? Can he can, can he lock it? Because he's on the podcast talking about we got all the pieces to go to the Super right. Bowl. Like you're the biggest piece that they That's need. Right. So you you well, got to hold yourself to a high regard this season. Well, let me ask you guys this because I feel like. If he doesn't turn it around this year, that's it. I, my, listen, when the Browns traded for Deshaun Watson, I was 100% certain he was going to be great. Mm-hmm. And then even going into last year, I, I think I said I was still 90% certain he was great. Well, now I'm like at 45%. If he doesn't do it this year, I'm going to be at like 1%. Because it's already been th- – remember, the last time he was great was 2020. Yeah. That's four, by the time we play, that'll be four years ago. <laughs> yeah. I think he. Gonna I, be good I think. That. I think it's it's now or never because if he falls on his face this year for whatever reason, the Browns have to now start thinking about the next quarterback. I agree with that statement. I do. I think, but I think he will play to the ability. I, I'm not saying he's gonna go out there and break like five thousand, six thousand yards like G. Bush, but I think he will have a very productive season this year. Because, like I say, I think he was just catching his rhythm. You know, in those mm-hmm. last couple of games, even though the Baltimore first half started off bad, I think he was still catching his rhythm. And I just, obviously, it's going to be hard to just come right out the gate and just be right where you were. It's going to take some time. Especially if they do what G. Bush said yesterday, which is not play him at all in the preseason. Yeah, that's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> G's absurd for saying that. But I think it's going to take some time. But I think by week four or five, like he you're should, expecting him to play well. I, I am. I hope you're right. I think I certainly think this because is you know why though because yeah. it's a lot of it's three guys on the roster that I can think of off the top of the head that's kind of dependent on him this year. Coop, Judy, and Moore. All three of them are just contract. contract it's years. contract yeah. year. Like you got to get it right. Like I need you to get right this season so I can get paid. You got paid and we've been behind you supporting you this whole time. Everybody talk negative about you. I I stopped them from doing that. Like now I need you to look out for me. I'm trying to get paid this year. So I'm hoping that that comes into a play and he has that on his mind. Like, you know what? These guys ride for me. I'm going to make sure that I do everything I can to be in the best situation to be the best version of myself so they can get paid. Mike? All right, we're going to move on to our next topic here. But first, a quick word from Game Time. If you're looking to go to a Cavs game, a Guardians game, a Browns game, a show, a musical concert, one that Anthony likes to go to, even a theater act, 
down in Playtime Square. Make sure you guys are using Game Time to get your last minute tickets. It's fast, it's easy, and they have all in prices so you're not getting screwed with late extra fees after you think you already have it in the bag. Plus, you can view your seat before you get to the game so you know exactly what you're getting. And the best part about game time, it's so easy to use. It's as easy as creating an account using promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, just create an account, redeem promo code locked on for $20 off. Just download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Speaking of Browns quarterbacks, the Browns and Jameis Winston agreed to terms on a contract last week. They've announced most of the signings for the other free agents they've signed so far, but we haven't seen an official announcement on Jameis Winston yet from the Browns. It could be absolutely nothing. could be something more. I'm just curious if you guys think there's anything more to the reason we haven't heard from the Browns on why Jameis Winston hasn't officially signed his deal yet. Before we dive deep into that, because that was part of our conversation yesterday with Tyler Huntley. And Jason, you weren't here yesterday. What What do you, before we get specifically into Watson, and maybe that's your answer. Maybe you think the Watson thing's going to fall apart. But what did you make of them signing another guy who's been a legitimate backup in the league? What did that signal to you? I was a little curious. And, and you know, maybe they're ensuring themselves in case Deshaun's not ready for the start of the season. I, yeah. I, that was, I think that's the most logical, right? Okay. Like, did you guys have a different view on that? Um. I said we said we we kind of all agreed that they needed another arm for camp, camp. Right. and OTAs, and I said that it also is a motivation factor for DTR because if you go out there thinking, oh, I'm gonna be on the roster, you're pushing him for that, yeah. right. for that third spot. And just that normally Tyler Huntley the, didn't strike me as like a Kellen Mond. That's not a camp arm. Camp cut. Yeah, arm, yeah. Who is who is the guy they brought? The the quarterback from Josh Georgia, Rose. Jake Fromm. Oh, and, and oh, Rose. What? Right. Yeah, they had Fromm in here. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. And those guys were never. You knew they <laughs> were. No, they, they were. Yeah. Tyler those Huntley's were the guy arms. who should be on an NFL team. Yeah, so I would think so. It is. Yeah, it was a little peculiar. So to that, do we think there's a chance? That something's happening with this Jameis Winston I, thing? I mean, it's Jameis, so you never know. But, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was kind – of, I asked someone this morning, like, what's going on with it? And yeah. I guess he's been out of the country recently. He just hadn't signed the contract yet. Oh, okay. So, right. I don't think it's anything more complicated than that. But it is – it's it is it, it's just a little strange that he hasn't signed it, I guess, but he hasn't been around. Mm. So. Do guys normally go out if they're free agents or out, out of the country this time of year? Sure, yeah, why not? It's, it's the, off the best time, yeah. No, but yeah. Like, wouldn't you they wait until you contract the nah, sign and go? Nah, you got no. an agent to handle oh, all yeah. that. Uh, all you need to do is have the terms negotiated. When you come back for OTAs, you can just sign right no, there. Uh, Tyvis is all about, uh, you, you can't get you to go on vacation. You say that all these guys are on vacation. Slackers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you make when, when you're Jameis Winston and yeah. you're a first pick of the draft and you got twenty million in the bank, yeah, go go on vacation. When you type as pile undrafted, there is no such thing as vacation. I, I think we should do a UCSS vacation with all our families. We we rent like a twenty five bedroom are house. We, are we going to do the water. show from out there? Yeah, no. we, we can do a show from out no. there. No, we take the show, no. show down no. for one week. I think it'd be no. fun to do the show from there. Thank you. Yeah. Well, but I want everybody to be on vacation. No. It would not be the same <laughs> show. It would very much That's be true. a vacation All show. All right, you talk me into it. We'll do the show from down there. Is Steve and, uh, paying us? I'm paying for the show. They pay one. <laughs> There's yeah. no chance to pay him. No, 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 no. For the show. For me, for us yeah, doing the show. For us. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, I'm all yeah, for yeah. it. Let's do it. We chip in on like the biggest house down in Florida <laughs> or Arizona or something. Now, Florida's better because it's on the, you'd be on the water. Yeah, that's where my wife's into, beaches yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of that. Golf yeah, side, yeah, yeah. not ocean side, golf side. Go cool golf side. Well, that's where I stay. Yeah. Although that's, the golf that's side better. has gotten so crowded. Yeah, well, well because it's golfer? better. No, well, I mean, the Gulf of Mexico side, oh, not ocean side. Oh, I thought you were saying golf. Golf like, side. No. Golf. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, anything anything fishy about Jameis or no big deal? I'm not worried about it at all. I mean, all right. Just... Mike, you want to spread a conspiracy theory? Do your best no. Aaron Rodgers here? It, no, it makes sense because we, we thought at first it was potentially a June 1st cut designation. That's that what I thought. Last night, yeah. that, that's not an no. issue. Uh, if it's just simply as he's not he, in the country, then that makes perfect sense. The only thing, when it's just so people know, so the June 1st designation, the, pre, the post-June 1st designation, the only thing that does is it allows the cutting team, uh, which is, in this case, the Saints, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. To uh, spread the cap hit over two years instead of one. 
But the only negative is no negative for the player. The only <coughs> negative for the team is that the Saints cannot use the cap savings that they get for Jameis until June 1st or Correct. until June 2nd. But in terms of him being able to sign before then, it's, it's a non-factor. Hey, you can sign any time. There you go. All right, easy money. We'll move on. In other news, Stephon Diggs, the Buffalo Bills wide receivers, put out a couple cryptic tweets over the weekend. Uh, let's say tag board full. The first one was just a simple heart emoji. <laughs> this comes after Buffalo's let go of a bunch of their higher-priced players to try and create some cap space. His next tweet said, ready for whatever. And last but not least, Ant, just a simple well dot 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 <laughs> dot. I lied. There's one more. And lastly, God, I trust you. So this led to some speculation that Stefan Diggs could be on the move. I know G. Bush put out a video on the UCSS channel, I think it was last week, saying sources, Browns could be interested in Stefan Diggs if he was available because of his history with Ken Dorsey. Yeah. Well, it turns out the source on that story was Tyvis Powell. So Tyvis. <laughs> allegedly. Alleged. We don't reveal sources, Mike. <laughs> no, Ty- Tyvis was going to admit that he said it. And I think he G. Bush was. Actually, he looked surprised to me. Yeah, I said it. What? Yeah, I said it. Let's see. Yeah. Sometimes, I, if Stephon Diggs, you. Just bless you. If Stephon Diggs, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I've Thank never you. seen a man gyrate like that sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> but, Tyvis, Ooh. if Stephon Diggs is on the move, knowing his history with Ken Dorsey, the Browns' new offensive coordinator, who is his offensive coordinator in Buffalo, should the Browns be interested, or is their wide receiver room set after the addition of Jerry Judy? Unlike Garrett Bush. I'm not all the, all about the operation stockpile. He tell you, yeah, 100% they should be interested. My thing is, <sighs> when I, now that they got Judy, okay, and the fact that all three of them is on contracts, like I said before, if you brought in Stefan Diggs, one, one of them is going to the bench. That's first of all. And it's probably well, Elijah Moore. Not probably Elijah Moore. <laughs> it's probably Elijah, Elijah Moore's Moore. gone. He's getting <laughs> traded or cut. That's right. Part of the deal. So that's a that's an issue right there. And I think they like Elijah over there. So I don't think that they would do that. Two, he would kind of mess up Coop and Judy because we know Stephon Diggs is a high volume pass catcher, meaning he need like twelve targets a game. And don't get me wrong, he'll catch ten of them and give you like one twenty off the ten catches. So. From that standpoint, yes. But I think it takes it away from Coop and Judy from being able to find out what they're going to be. Obviously, you want to have more weapons on the team. The more weapons, meaning that you don't have to worry about all these double teams because you got guys that can make plays everywhere. But I just don't think that he would fit right now because of the fact that they want to – they kind of owe Coop uh, – they, they want to do right by Coop, and I think they want to give Judy the benefit of the doubt. So I don't think that they will make that trade for those reasons because of the fact that he's a high value. Can he come here and be successful? Absolutely. He's a really good player, even though he kind of slumped down at the end of last season. But he's still a really good player. Can he be effective with D.Y.? Absolutely. But I just don't think that they will make that that trade because of the fact that they want to try to pay Coop, Judy, and more. He takes up a lot of oxygen in every room he's in. He does. He – this is now – two teams he's tried to force his way off of and he's an incredible talent of course you'd love to have him but the cap is real rosters are real this isn't fantasy football where you just yeah give me that guy yeah give me that guy yeah give me that guy you'd love to have a talent as Stefan Diggs but it comes with a lot of other stuff and I said earlier like I'm big on locker rooms and on chemistry in locker rooms and on players and I just think that's an awfully big disruption I don't think it's realistic uh This isn't anything new. I think teams around the league probably sensed before that Diggs was unhappy. And if there was a legitimate path to do something like this, they probably would have done that before they made the Judy trade, if that's something that they really wanted to pursue. But, like, the Browns locker room, they don't have a lot of guys that take up a lot of oxygen that are divas, more or less. Odell. Even when Odell was here, He's still, like, I'll give him credit because, yes, he did take up a lot of air in the room, but he he wasn't a diva in the sense of, like, throwing tantrums on the field and demanding the ball and and stuff that you see from a lot of other guys. He really wasn't like that. Um, So I I just don't think he fits here with where they're trying to build this thing and what they're trying to accomplish. I don't know Stefan off the field really fits with that. I don't think. The only way I'd consider Stefan Diggs for the Browns is if he were somehow cut. 
and I can sign him as a free agent, and then I have no risk. Right. Because if he's a pain in the ass. I mean, he's one tweet away from being Antonio Brown, isn't he? I think that might be putting a little far. Uh, is he? You talking about Diggs? I mean, he's headed. <laughs> is he headed down that road? Is he headed down the? I mean, <laughs> no. This guy Diggs. is the biggest whiner. First of all, he was in Minnesota. He was putting up huge, big numbers there. He had a good quarterback in Kirk Cousins. Now he's been in Buffalo. He's playing with arguably the second best quarterback in the league. Whoa. He's put up huge numbers every year there, <laughs> and he's always complaining all the time. I think that. The reason he does that is yeah. because he believes in himself and he believes that does the, Amari Cooper not believe in himself. Yeah, but he's saying like <clears> the <throat> best chance for them to win is to get me the ball. Like, I, like the offense is OK. Like all those other guys. Are OK, but get me the ball, which is what you want. You want to be you got to have that confidence in yourself. Of course, Tyvis, but there's got to be a cap to it. No, I, yeah, not a distraction to the team. Yeah, but the thing is, OK, I give yeah. you I give you an example. Yeah. When we played Buffalo, yeah, not this year, last year, he went to he went over to the head coach and he said, "I need the ball," and, and I think he had like no targets in the first half. Yeah. The second half, he destroyed us. So he was right. That's the thing. Like he, okay, he'd be right about it. When it becomes a point, like I want to be off this team, or you know, he not he never vocally said he wanted to be traded. His brother said right. that he needs to be traded. Fine, but it's it's been made pretty obvious that he's, he's unhappy. And why? <laughs> I mean, the guy. I, I, well, I, I mean, because you it. want you want to win. You want to win a Super Bowl. Well, maybe he don't think Josh Allen is that well, guy. The only team in football Which that a has a, a clearly a better chance to, to win a Super Bowl is the Chiefs. That's it. Well, Nobody else has a clearly better chance than the Bills. Do you want to hear his, his targets the last four years in Buffalo? Maybe the Niners. Go ahead. In 2020, 166 targets. 2021, 164 targets. In 2022, he played one fewer game, 154 targets. In 2023, he played all 17 back up to 160. Yeah, I mean, they get him the ball a ton. He's playing with Josh Allen, who's a great quarterback. What else I do mean, you want? I mean, what else, what else does he want? You got, you're on a team with it has. I'm not going to not do it because of Elijah Moore. Who gives a rat's ass about Elijah Moore? He's a slappy. I don't care about him. But uh, and if you know, but but <laughs> Diggs is just like, I mean, the guy, man, I, 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 I mean, he's a good player, but he's going to be 31 during the season. Now, so is Amari, right? Which means the cliff is coming soon. But <laughs> happens the, to everybody. The cliff, not LeBron. Diggs is one year older than Amari. Jerry yeah. Rice was having good seasons after 30. Yeah, well, those are the greatest basketball player and the greatest football player of all time. So, well, I'm just saying it's possible. With today's medicine and the new rules in the NFL, they yeah. should play forever. By the way, I think Jerry Rice is the greatest football player of all time, and I don't care what anybody else thinks. Diggs, uh, real quick, Diggs' think contract <laughs> I think you're over wrong. the next few years, <laughs> Bull, is also... You think Giannis is better than LeBron? That's that's a fact. <laughs> Diggs' contract is also a man. Yeah, his contract's a disaster. Yeah, I mean, he's, his base, it's not his cap, his base salary is what the Browns would have to pay, or any team that acquires him this year, 18 and a half. 18, 19.2, and then in 2027, when he's 34 years old, it's not a void year, he has a base salary of $15 million. Actually, those amounts are nothing, but it's the amount of years that's the problem. I mean, they, I guess they can, I probably can get out of that, I would guess, after one year or two. But His dead cap, if you cut him right now, $50 million. Yeah, but that wouldn't be for the Browns. That would be His different. dead cap next year, if you were to trade for no, him, no, and they no, cut no. him. None of that affects the... The dead cap is just what it would be for the Bills, not for the Browns. Even if the Browns traded for him, they yes, would not absorb because that dead they, cap. Because what he's... They, they have essentially pushed money off to cap hits in, in later years. That wouldn't affect the Browns because... They That's not transferred via trade, though? What's that? That part's not transferred via trade? No. The Browns would, would take a cap hit, certainly higher than the amount, maybe, depending on how they restructured the contract. But they wouldn't pick up the Bills' cap hit. It's, it's not dollars for dollars like that. No, I, I, know, I know the cap hit, but the dead but he's, cap. Uh, listen, I thought the, the fact dead that, cap would be the same. I wouldn't want to have him more than one year. He's going to turn 31 right. in November. Right. Yeah, he's fully under contract through his 34-year-old season. Yeah, I mean, like what fully, are the not, not void year contract, but like fully under contract through his 34-year-old I mean, it's very rare that a, that a wide receiver is good past 31, maybe 32. I mean, very rare. Ain't, Tay, ain't Devontae Adams that old? How old is Devontae? Ain't he like 31? And he had a pretty good season. Who they quarterback? They traded for Gardner Minshew, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Devontae Adams is – he just turned 31. Like, just turned 31. Mm. And he had his worst season in a while. <laughs> now, it was still good. Still had a great season. But yeah, 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 yeah. But it was his worst in a while. But he had – 1,144 1, yards, yards and eight touchdowns. That's his worst that's, season. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that's a, that's the three amazing. Years, the three years before that, 1,374 <laughs> and 18 touchdowns, 1,553 and 11 touchdowns, 1,516 and 14 touchdowns. His worst year is better than a lot of people's oh, best, yeah. best years. And yeah. Devontae will turn 32 in December. So he's playing most of this year at age 30. I'm waiting on him to get traded to the Jets. Be back with a ride. Ted and Garrett Wilson. Woo. Oh, I want the Jets to fail so badly. Although Why? I like Garrett Wilson because <laughs> Rodgers is such a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. What do we got? All right, we're going to move on to our next topic. At 5 o'clock tonight, the Ultimate Cavs show is back. Jason yeah. and myself breaking down a little more of the uh, Cavs win last night, previewing their upcoming games the rest of the week. And yeah. other than that, we haven't agreed upon the topic. So there's a, Yeah, TV there TV. are rumors flying throughout the building that there's a little tension between the two hosts of the Ultimate Cleveland Cavs show. Any truth to those rumors? What are you talking about? Is, is your source Tyvis Powell? Yeah, no, right? my source is you. You're like, Jason hasn't told me once what he wants to talk about he, tonight. Mike, <laughs> it, it's me, it's not Mike. Mike sent me a list like that long yeah. of topics. Yeah. I slept like crap last night. I yeah. put the kids on the bus. I went back to bed this morning. I haven't That's looked it. at you anything. You were out. I haven't looked at anything. Well, it'll be a good show no matter what. That's coming up at 5. Make sure yeah. you check out the Ultimate 216 show with Earl on Thursday, the Ultimate Guardian show starting on March 25th with you. It's Monday. This coming Monday, Monday, the debut, 3 p.m. Yep. Most weeks it'll be at 3 p.m. We will have some fluctuation because of game times. but And then the Ultimate Brown show every Monday and Friday with G. Bush as well. Yes. Uh, speaking of the Browns, they worked out Aaron Lynch yesterday, who hasn't played in the NFL since the year 2020, but it's been a relatively productive third-down pass rusher throughout his career. A former fifth-round pick that's bounced around but does have 21 career sacks. He did I'm surprised the Browns worked out a defensive end considering how many defensive ends are already locked into their roster. Are you guys a little surprised at the tryout as well? That's crazy because he played with me in San Francisco. I kept looking at like Aaron Lynch. Why didn't yeah. he sound so familiar? I, I, I feel like I'm old for real. For When's real. the last time he played? 2020. 2020. So you mean to tell – so mean, you're telling me there's a chance for me. That's what <laughs> you're mean, telling me. <laughs> first of all, ah, get that work yeah, out. Yeah, let me go ahead and drop some What are wings? the odds that this guy could help them as not played in four years? A pass rusher? Listen, yeah. as a pass rusher, you, you wake just, up and do it. Just be relentless. Yeah, you, we need you for two plays. Just be relentless for two plays. It's and probably we'll get you a blow. The tires, maybe. No, right? I think it's yeah. It's one of those things that if we're going, we're going to work him out. See if he still got it. Yeah, yep. And if he can, we'll cool. He'd be a nice practice squad guy. We'll work him through the rest of yeah. the season. If he becomes really good from getting it back in shape and getting back in game shape, we can always activate him for a game, give us another pass. Right, right, right. You constantly have to be looking for talent, yeah. and sure. especially on the margins. I mean, if somebody goes down in training camp. I mean, you know? right, but he's not a guy they're giving a guaranteed contract no, to. No, 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 no. He'd, no. Be, he'd be on a minimum type deal. Yeah. Right? yeah. Which, bring which is fine because I know a safety out there that's willing to play on the minimum deal as well. And, you know, NFL is such a violent sport. You know, I think that Are we, you still willing to play? I am. I go out there. Why? You have a nice so I love, career now. I love, Why I would love, you do that? I love the game. I know, but you're doing well for yourself, right? True, you get an but, to but, take but listen, how cool yeah. would it be if I, if you if, played, if I played and I still cool came, on, <laughs> I came on on my wait, wait, you off on Tuesdays? Yeah. Tuesdays, I roll up that in here and sit down. Be like, what's your? I tell you, what's going on in the locker room? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I would. Yeah, I don't think the Browns. Not on, not on the air. I would. Yeah, right. That's true. We get the behind the scenes. Stuff. I don't think the Browns would look too favorably on you coming on the show every week. I mean, me. time. This is if, if like they want them that bad, they got to accept hey, it. <laughs> hey, like, listen, I got to do my. I do a hit section. Maybe I won't do the whole two hours. I do yeah. a ten minute hit All section. Right. Ty, what do you remember about Aaron Lynch though? As, as a player, you obviously played with him in San Francisco. I'm trying to remember. I think he – I feel like he was uh, one of the – he was a rotational piece. But I don't remember him being, like, like great or anything like that. I, you know what I remember about him? I remember he got mad about a contract thing, and then he ended up leaving after the season. Right, we, it was the year we went, like, 4-12 and 12 or something like that. And I remember him saying, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> And the team was like, well, we went 4-12 and with you. We went 4-12 without you. I think, he, without I that, think yeah. he went to the I, I think he went to either the Jags or the Bears after that. But I remember yeah. him. He went to the Bears, then Jacksonville. Yeah, see? I was like, he was like, yeah, I'm out of here. I remember that. 
We so was backing up our locker. He was gold. In his first two seasons in the league, he put up 12 and a half sacks. Six as a rookie, six and a half in 2015, Tyvis. After that, his numbers kind of dropped off a bit. He tested very well at the combine. He's a guy from South Florida, but once again, has not played since 2020. All right. His last three seasons in the NFL. Uh, hell, let's go last four seasons in the NFL. He has a combined seven sacks. Nice. It's just a camp body. Yeah. If, if I, they even sign him. By the way, did you, Kevin Zeitler, the guy who I couldn't think of for like two signed days. Signed with the Lions. He signed with the Lions. So the Ravens have lost two starting offensive linemen. He played guard, right? Was that yeah. Kevin Zeitler? Yeah. He was still good. The was Lions like, has had a really good offseason. season. I, you know they got DJ Reader? Would you think I did? I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I was like, man, that's a good sign for them. That was a man. good move by them. Yeah, they get that corner position figured out. They, they got. Well, they've some. acquired a couple of corners. Oh. I don't know if they're any good, but I don't know. The uh, Mick Robertson, it. he's from like no uh, idea. La Nebraska. Tech, I think. No, he went to La Tech, didn't he? The corner. Oh, or? I think the running back. No, I ain't thinking about the running. I'm talking about the cornerback. They also re-signed DPJ. By the way, yeah, I didn't see that. By speaking the way, of, real quick, speaking of DPJ, talk about a guy who hit free agency at the wrong time. If he had hit free agency coming off his 2022 season entering 2023, he's getting a $15, $20 million contract. No, get yeah. out of here. What are yes, you out of your mind? Absolutely. Absolutely. What fifteen twenty million dollar contract? Not, not not per year. Wait a minute. Like a two three two no. three. No. Wait a minute. You don't think he's getting five million a year coming off his eight hundred and sixty nine yard season? Two-year, $10 million contract? I don't think anybody was taking him seriously. Jason, back me up here. A guy that young coming off a season with hey. the tumultuous quarterback play. How many between, touchdowns he had that year? He only had three touchdowns. Oh, psh, stop. Come on. Yeah, he ain't getting 15. What would you say, 15? <laughs> like over three years, like three for 15, five no, million a year. No, 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 I don't think you'd get that. No. I think you might. He would have got a couple million. Like two for six, maybe. Yeah, maybe you, you get like eight million and five of it guaranteed. Right, something like that. Something like that's that. more than what he got. That's more well, than what, what he get, got. Minimum salary? I think, yeah, one year, $2 million deal. By the way, I saw uh, there was somebody put out a mock draft and they had a trade. Uh, Ty, was listening to this one. I'm curious. So this, this was the trade. It was, who was it? It was the bank. It was T. Higgins. To the Vikings for Justin Jefferson? No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. I can't. It was the Bengals tr- moving up in the draft. I can't remember. Who's. Uh, they said the Vikings. Somebody. Again, who's the second wide receiver coming off the board? Neighbors? Ro- neighbors or Ro- 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 I think it was to trade up to get neighbors, and it would be. It was like Higgins and a second round pick next year, and the Bengals traded up to the sixth spot or the eighth spot, whatever it was. And. And, the, you know, whatever I'm, team it was also I mean, got the Bengals. That's a Trump smart thing. trade by the Cincinnati. But why would the other team do that? Because it was the, the Vikings, you say it was? No, it wasn't the Vikings. I can't remember who it was. You some said the team, fourth seed, the fourth team? No, that's, somebody the, in the, the top Giants? ten that's not taking a quarterback. Might have been Carolina the or Giants? something. No, it would have been, no, it would have been the Cardinals. Maybe it was the Cardinals. It might have been they the Cardinals. Got the but I'm like, why wouldn't the Cardinals just draft that wide receiver instead of trading for T. Right. Higgins? Yeah, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any I sense. Would just, I, the fourth, I but would, yes, it should the, be Marvin Harrison Jr. If the Bengals could trade Higgins and get a top 10 pick, you know, obviously they have to give up some other things in addition to Higgins. I would do it, and then I'd take either, if I could get Marvin Harrison, obviously, yeah. or Neighbors, or even the tight end. What's his name? Bowers. Bowers. Take him, too. Anyway. I mean, if that's if – because – the only, only way, logically, I think you make that trade is that you know T. Higgins. You know what he is in the NFL. Yeah. The other guys, you you know that in the draft, it's always a crap shoot. Crap you shoot, never sure. know yeah, who's yeah. going to pan out, who's not. With T. Higgins, you know he's played in the league. You know he can be successful. He Can, yeah. be, can he be a number one is the biggest question. Yeah. And if all, you're going to make yeah. that trade, you right. better you know better that sure. he can be a number one. By the way, everybody, <laughs> now all the speculation is going to be five quarterbacks taken to the top. 12 picks. I just seen that JJ McCarthy gonna go fourth to the Vikings. Does, does he not him. have Mac Jones and Kenny Pickett written all over him? Like I, I said, Mac, I said Mac Jones was gonna suck. I said Kenny Pickett was gonna be Mac Jones. So far, I'm right. I think this. I think McCarthy's gonna be the same as those two guys. I mean, McCarthy doesn't strike me as a great NFL quarterback. No, I, but he's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm calling my shot right I was, now. I, Every I, quarterback in this draft will stink except for Caleb Williams. Uh, the rest are all gonna suck. That's what I think. Drake May, nah. Jaden Daniels, the Heisman winner. Nah, I, I'm I'm tend to agree with Bull. This <laughs> is not Caleb Williams, the only one. I don't think this is a very good quarterback class at all. What do you think? Who do you think is going to be good? <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm not big on Bo Nix. No. no. Don't like him. Don't him. And Drake McCarthy. may Drake may can't win games, but I, what I learned is that they didn't win big games in college. They tend to win games in the NFL, which is weird to me. Like C.J. Stroud, he lost a lot of big games in college, but does well in the NFL. I don't know what that's about. Hmm. Uh, I got a theory, but you work for the university, so I'm gonna say it. <laughs> This is you, what do you mean? This is free speech. Should've what are you making up, Bull? Should have made a change. I was just kind of looking at Drake Mace. That, didn't he back hey. up Sam Howell? Drake, uh, he yeah. didn't back up, he replaced Sam Howell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sam Howell sucks. Which, by the way, if, if Washington was going to pick Drake May with the second overall pick, they'd probably keep Sam Howell. So the fact they traded yeah. Sam to Seattle I, I'm telling makes you, me feel like I, I, and I, the move. As always, I'll admit if I'm wrong, I, Caleb Williams is going to be really good. And the other guys, nothing. Drake Mays an SWB, baby. Stiff white boy. <laughs> I, I always make him laugh when I Because I mean, I mean, having to try to figure it out. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you. I should have uh, seen if you guys could guess. <laughs> you really don't like Drake Mays? I do not like him at all. No no chance. No, no, no. The court. Bo Nick. What about Michael Penix? He's, he's like, not getting drift. He's not one of the five, right? Yeah, he is. He's the fifth. May. Penix. Williams, Daniels, McCarthy. Oh, yeah. No, I don't like him either. I mean, him and Knicks are 5 6, depending on how you prefer the quarterbacks. I, if I had to pick second, I'd, I'd go him second. Michael Penix? Yeah. But I, I, I'm not feeling it. Bo Nix. That guy can't play. Come he, on. Said, he said, I looked at him and McCarthy, said, he, he's not a player. McCarthy. No chance that guy's going to be good in the <laughs> Listen, NFL. McCarthy, Mays. Anybody, anybody think these guys are going to be good besides <laughs> Caleb Williams? I don't really love Daniels. I think when you're playing uh, with two of the, the best receivers. they're all cracking up back, back there? I don't know. They say they can't, they can't tell us. I don't, I don't know what they're laughing at. Uh, but, but Daniels had two of the best receivers in all of college football throwing to this year, Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors, who will yeah. both be first-round picks, uh, which makes his life a lot easier. Drake May has potential, but he's really inconsistent. McCarthy, he's Mitch Trubisky. That's what I feel like. McCarthy, yeah, like I have – they didn't even let him throw the ball in college. Like I don't, I don't even know how you truly evaluate what he is. But if if your offensive coordinator doesn't trust you to throw a pass against Penn State in the second half, like what does that say about you? So, did JJ? Did anybody ever watch JJ McCarthy and think that's an NFL quarterback ever? They didn't even let him throw the ball, like ever. I mean, he so, made some passes that was really good, but I did, I thought he needed to stay for another year. But I also know why he left. He's gonna be a top five pick. Like he made the right choice to leave, whether yeah. or not. It pans out. We'll find and out. by the way, and you know at least some of them are not going to work out because the, the hit only, rate is forty percent on first round quarterbacks. The, the only twenty twenty is the only draft where all the quarterbacks hit. That's the only one that I can think of, like in forever. Twenty twenty. Who was that? Who was twenty twenty was Burrow, Herbert, Tua, Hertz, Jordan Love with the top five quarterbacks. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. That is really good. That's five of your top 12, 15 quarterbacks in the league. And that, yeah, that's crazy. That was the year that. All heck broke loose with Green Bay. But Aaron Rodgers, yeah, and they, they did the right thing. Green Bay was right. <laughs> Green Bay was right. Jordan Love looked like a stud last year, especially the second half. You taking him on your fantasy team? Potentially. Potentially. I like him a lot this year. All right, guys. Let's talk a little Cavs after a quick word from FanDuel. You can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on an upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Last night, a wonky Cavs game. Cleveland without a bunch of starters, but it was the Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, and Marcus Morris show. Uh, that was Cleveland weird. to victory. Guys, this is, I got to tell you, I, I, I don't need to be a party pooper, but I'm about to be a party pooper. Here we go. This is getting tough. I mean, I know they won. Yeah, they like that. But this is getting tough to watch. I mean, they all, you know, without Donovan Mitchell. It's a different I, team. I saw, I saw somebody, some media outlet in Cleveland, might have been my old station, posted, you know, gutsy win by the underman Cavs. And I'm like, oh, God, who, who would have thought that Marcus Now, Earl's going to get mad at me. He gets mad at me when I say, who cares? Marcus Morris comes in on a 10-day contract. And, and looks better than Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. oh. By yeah. the way, and Marcus I, Morris. So a, uh, a friend, I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody I know saw Marcus Morris in Cleveland, right? He was just on the street. I don't know what he was doing, you know, walking Taking somewhere it. or whatever. And, so, and this person was like, hey, Marcus, can I get a picture? And he was not friendly in return. I, I don't think that's shocking. Hmm. No? I don't think so. He seems like he comes off as that type of person. Hmm. I don't know him. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I covered the league for a long time, but he's uh, he can be a little rough hmm. from what I've heard. He, to rough. come off the street and have 14. I tell you what, my boy DG struggling, man. He oh, was, my God. He was like, he can't hit a fast and save his life. Yeah, it was. Uh, but the good news is, Karis Levert is dynamic off the bench. 23 and 11. He, yeah. I, I wow, he had like when, eight, ass, eight assists or eight rebounds. Yeah, yeah he. That was I that mean, triple double. I was wondering who was the backup point guard. I mean, when you got a guy like that that's facilitating and hitting like that, yeah. he's making everybody around him better on that second unit. So, yeah. that's he's playing nice well. To, yeah. And that's the thing with Karras is it's it's hot and cold, man. Like, I mean, he, he'll he, give you that, and he, then he'll turn around and go 2-12. That's a fact because he dropped yeah, 40 like, or 50 last year. and then like, But he had to, I told him he had to rock the afro. When he got the afro, yeah. he'd go for 50. <laughs> Brings you good luck, yeah. I guess so. When Karras is at his best, he's like the second best player on the team besides Donovan. No, I wouldn't go that high, but but he's I mean, he's he's a really important piece to what they do. And but when but he's it's, off, he's you just don't know what you're going to get night yeah, to night. That's I the know. that's the frustrating part. But when he's cooking, man, it's that word consistent. You know who he is? J.R. Smith. He's better though. No, very well, different player than J.R. No, very different. Player. I'm talking about as far as hot and cold. JR get hot. JR can just shoot it from the yard and he's still gonna make it. But when he cold, he ain't gonna do nothing. <sighs> JR was better defensively than he ever got credit for when he wanted to be. Yeah. <laughs> which was not often. Well, no, that's <laughs> the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, those are two totally different games yeah. to me. You can't really compare those what two. Are you, what are you hearing about Donovan Mitchell? What's the what's the buzz right now? I don't I don't know. Uh this it's weird. Like this whole knee thing is is weird. So I mean, at this point, you got to be right for the playoffs. That's yeah. it. That's all that matters. So you think so, he's shut down to the playoffs? No, you 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 don't, you don't want to roll. You don't want your first game back to be a game playoff. one. Yeah, I agree. But it that. might be till a week but or two I, before. I mean, I would, <laughs> I would err on the side of caution with this. I mean, it's what March eighteenth, nineteenth. We got four weeks. I mean, I'd I'd give them a good couple of weeks. And, and are we playing the pace? If the, if it ended the day, we play the Pacers in the first round. No, no, it's Philly. Philadelphia now, Ooh. which is about. Ooh. Worst Embiid case. returned to practice today, by the way. Yeah, Ooh. that's like that's like a worst case scenario for the Cavs. <laughs> if you had to bet right now, over under one and a half playoff wins, not series wins, game wins, over under one and a half. You had to bet right now. Would you? What would you bet? The Cavs? Yeah, over. First of all, better be over. It better over. be. First of all. My boy Chris, my boy Chris Shaw, bet with Chris on IG. He told me not to bet with the Cavaliers. He said, Any, anytime I put a parlay together yeah. and I put the Cavs on there, he said the problem is that I'm using my feelings over facts. I told you that weeks ago. I didn't I say on this show yeah, so me when and, you bet, me and, Earl, never bet. me and Earl put a parlay together. Well, I told you guys DC, never DC, bet DC in a Rob game involving it. your team. Yeah, I should. It's because you can't be objective. Objective. I thought he was gonna have a good game. Uh, can't be objective. <laughs> we, they, he, DG, like, you, know, you like the only because option. Earl's like more of a diehard fan than you are. Earl told me he was never gonna put him on his ticket, and he sent me that ticket. And he showed yeah. was on there. Earl, so. don't bet on the Cavs, man. <laughs> bet on teams you don't care about. I ain't never put DG on a ticket again in my life. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm there with Mobley. Uh, he can't. No, he. Him and, De- him and DeJounte Murray will never see it. <laughs> never. It was a weird win, though, yesterday. Is Marcus there anything Morris. you could take from this game? Uh, I didn't expect Marcus Morris to make four threes. That was, like, that's, that, that was a hell of a performance to step in, not <coughs> playing all season, kind of come in. Oh, he hadn't played the whole season? Well, not with the Cavs. Is he the oh, one no, that got – when, When's the last time he played? Is he the I'll one that one got time. hurt by the, the Joker? I think it was his brother. So it was Markeith. I thought it was him. I, I could be wrong. Don't, I never don't know. quote me on that. I never know. One of them got into it with the Joker and like was out for the rest of the season. Is that when the brothers, when Joker's brothers yes. were? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bull, he had played 37 games with what? the Sixers well, earlier in the season. So when was, but when was the last time he played? The <laughs> last time he played, you know? according to Pro Basketball Reference game log, before <laughs> last night, brothers? 
was the Joker. Oh, yeah, big, the biggest he is. Uh, <laughs> February fifth. So over a month. All right. So a it's month been and a few while. Days. It's been six weeks since he played. Yeah. So to come in, hit four three. We're talking also, about. I'm not even listening. We're talking about the <laughs> brothers. Oh yeah, yeah. That fight. <laughs> yeah, the Jokic been brothers epic. are giant. Jokic, and they're all yeah. tatted. Yeah. You yeah. You, you aren't those do, guys fighters? You do not want to be Ooh. in a. Room well, what's crazy, with Jason, is. If you're talking NBA brothers, I think the Morris brothers are the last pair of brothers in the NBA you want to mess with. That's true. In terms of outside of NBA players, the Jokic brothers are the last two brothers of a player you want to mess with. They that would have been Jokic a hell of a up. family bro. I, I think that there's dead bodies in the in the brothers. Oh, past. 85% <laughs> chance of that. I, I and they went after the with Morris tweet? Yeah. Why? I forget now. I forget. Mike, I, do you remember what one happened? Of them take a cheap shot? Yeah, I don't remember. All I, I, thought that, I thought the Joker took the cheap shot. No, so... One of the more, and I don't know which one, I'll look it up on hit the end, but one of the Morrises got in like a little tuffle with Jokic, and then on a jump ball or a, a pass that was in the air, Jokic pushed one of the Morris brothers in the back, and then the other Morris, then the whole team kind of went after him, and that's when Jokic's brothers were in the stands. That's when they got their viral moment. Um, I'll see if I can find it on tag board for you guys. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> they, are, they are dudes, man. Woo. Mm. What you, I won't even listen. What are you guys talking about? Uh, Just how impressive it was for oh, that Marcus Morris, Morris hadn't to come played in. at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, he, played, he <laughs> joins the Cavs, goes out there, hits a bunch of threes. And he and played fourth quarter minutes. <laughs> yeah. He made fourth quarter threes, and the first two were wide open. You know, you expect him to make those. He's a capable shooter. But the two in the fourth quarter, he stepped in. The one in the left corner, there's a hand right in his face. And the one in the right corner, yeah. that's a – a well-designed and executed play for a guy who's been with yeah. the team for like 48 hours. I mean, he was probably their third best player last night behind Karras and, and Allen. Uh, yeah. I mean, when we talk about the Cavs, what's the one thing we talk about all the time is the toughness and the lack of toughness. Yeah. And this is well, team he'll add some. He will add, he will add that yeah. and then some. So, you know, I think it's insurance with Tristan coming back. You take a look at Tristan and you see what he's got now. He and, minutes, but man, if you can know. find someone who can play – they, one of those guys, I don't think you're going to play both of them, but one of those guys can fill a role for you yeah. in a postseason series. And not that you're going to be a rotational piece playing 28 minutes a night, but you find pockets of, yeah. of opportunities here and, and, and sort of F the game up a little bit. And, right. and yeah, he could, he could for sure help them down the stretch. How concerned are we about Darius just being awful shooting the ball right now? Like, what's going on there? Is this still weight-related? or I don't know. I, I've said I mean, it a hundred times. Have, it's not even like he's got to compete with Mitchell for I've said a hundred times. He's just having a bad year. It happens. No. And what about Okoro? No, it, it seems doesn't. like his offensive yeah, game so has it, disappeared. LeBron had a bad year. Well, Mike, what do we think of that? Okoro's offensive game has disappeared here? Well, he's, he's a result. His offense there is a result of things. Donovan, Darius, and other guys oh. creating for him. So, right. when they have no Donovan and less creation, he yeah. doesn't have the same space to work with. But – the Darius thing, I, you know, I, I do think his inability to get to the paint at the same rate he had previously is a factor of him just being 10 pounds lighter. It, the game's being called more – or refs are allowing more physicality. That doesn't play into his game. <coughs> uh, but he's just having a bad shooting year. And you can't compare him to LeBron, Tyvis. Like, come on. Come on. Just because yeah, LeBron never LeBron? had a bad year. I said yeah, guys have a bad year sometimes. It what? just happens. Yeah. And he says LeBron never had a bad year. I mean – I, I will say that <laughs> LeBron – well, LeBron never had a bad year, of course, but you can't compare. But basketball is the easiest sport – of the three we pay attention to, it's the easiest sport to predict the guy's success. Because it's very rare in the NBA that a good player just has a bad season. Tough. Unless it's injury-related. See that? Tough. Whereas in baseball and football, it happens all the time. It looks at me like I'm crazy. Well, I'm trying to. He tried to weigh it. <laughs> I'm trying to process it. What do you think, Mike? You think? I don't think it's close. Mm. I think guys have bad years in basketball. They do. Like who? How many guys? I have mean, bad? it's baseball is definitely the most variant. I mean, Cody Bellinger was the like MVP, crazy. and then he sucked for two years. Yeah, and then he's good again. Yeah. I mean, uh, see, yeah. Blake Snell has won two Cy Youngs, and his other years he's just a guy. In baseball, it's it's like yeah. Ba- a million baseball, players. there's the most ebbs and flows. Basketball, more than football. How many guys know. in the NBA go off a cliff unless it's due to injury? When does that happen? No, or, more, or unless they're old slow, or injury? It's more of a slow, gradual decline. Like LeBron's still phenomenal, but he's not LeBron. Nobody five like, years ago. In baseball, there's guys like Dale Murphy was on his way to being a Hall of Famer. 
Do you, do you know who Dale Murphy is? No. Uh, Anthony Earl Tyvis, have never, you heard of Dale Murphy? I've never heard of him. Oh I know you've goodness. heard of Dale yeah, Murphy. Yeah. Remember his career? Yeah. The guy in his 20s was one of the best players in baseball. Phenomenal. It, we all thought he was a lock hall of famer. And then he just collapsed at age 28, well, 29, People don't 30. collapse in football. I'm saying in football we see that sometimes. But in basketball, that never happens. Unless, Ooh. It's, unless it's injury or they're old. I'm trying to think. Of Remember Sean Alexander? Woo! Guy yeah. was guy was the best running back in football. Two years later, he's out of the game. Well, Peyton, Davis, Todd Gurley. Peyton Hillis. Todd Gurley. No, Peyton Hillis had one weird year. I mean, when you look at Darius's overall stats, though, like, well, that's he, what I'm looking at. He hasn't fallen off a cliff by the numbers, right? But it's it's. But a lot the, of it's injury of related. It. It's yeah. injury related. Yeah, the impact of his numbers they feel a lot more empty than it a had guy, in a player, and, and a player of what I'm saying is. Like a player, the, the the superstars of the league, the top thirty players, which Darius Garland is not. Those guys just never had bad. Did, they don't just have it. bad years. What happened to Sean uh, Alexander unless they're hurt or they just yeah. got too old. That, that's in fair. football, it happens once in a while. In baseball, it happens all the time. Here's what I, if you like ten years from now, if you pull up Darius's stats, I'd say the back of the baseball card type stats and look yeah. at them. You would not look at this year and go, "Wow, did he really fall off?" A right. Cliff? I mean, you they're would. they're down. Right. But it's not. Right. It's not like it's, you wouldn't what happened to him if you, yeah. if you weren't paying attention. Yeah, yeah. It's just and in baseball it happens all the time, and in football it happens sometimes. But in basketball, that almost never. And, and I'm talking the top, like the top thirty players in each sport. Right. And I think the one thing with DG too is, you know, a confidence is part of it. He just hasn't had the same shooting success as he's had in previous years, especially from deep. His numbers, you look at his career three-point shooting percentage as a rookie, 36%. Second year, 40%. Next year, 38 and a half. Next year, 41. He's at 37 and a half. So it's right in the same range. It's just he goes hot and cold. The consistency is not there with DG. He yeah. still has these games where he makes seven, eight, nine threes. Yeah. And everyone's on Twitter like, oh, my goodness, look what he's doing. And it's incredible. When he makes shots like that, he's one of the most fun players to watch in the entire NBA. And then the very next game – he could put up a performance like we saw last night, where you I don't have Karis Levert. Be one of the most fun players to watch in the NBA. Do you? Hey. Like as much as I'm down on him now, when Kyrie Irving played here, yeah. he was one of the most. Well, fun he's not players. Kyrie. I'm not trying to say he's Kyrie. He got some. He got some. He does some nice stuff because he, he got a nice. But hand. he doesn't excite you. He like got a Kyrie nice did. handle, like like when he spent Alex Caruso like a top and step back and hit the tray. Like that was fun to watch. Like he does stuff like. There's that. There's only a handful of guys that can do some of the stuff DG can do, yeah. which is why when he goes for. 12 points on one of nine shootings, and he's not really as effective as he should be down the stretch. You're like, come on. Like, we expect more because you are that talented. Yeah. I'm curious. Are Ka- let's, I, is, does, is Earl still here? Earl's still here, yeah. Earl, jump on the mic here because Earl's the <laughs> biggest Cavs fan here. And I'm curious. When you're watching these games late in the year before the playoffs, these last dozen games, whatever they got left, 15 games, are you sitting there watching every play? Like, when they score a basket, are you, like, pumping your fist? I'm just curious. Pumping your fist. Like, how into it are you? Um, it depends on, honestly, how I feel about the Cavs at said time. Like, I watched the game yesterday, and I was excited to see them win because, of course, I want to see my team win. But I wasn't over-enthused, and I think it's because of how they've played lately. All right. So you were, you were into it enough that you cared that they won, but you're not, like, living and dying by every play. Exactly, yeah. All right. I, I see that. I feel like that's how – the Earl's a diehard. I feel like the diehard Cavs fans are kind of, I bet, generally like that right now. It's like, well, I mean, it's because it's, it's when you look at it, feels, when you look at the season, it's like, well, they go win one playoff series and then that's it. Like, well, the Mitchell, I think the Mitchell injury right now has everybody. They haven't played as of, sad as of will. lately. They haven't really played in a way where it's like that team can go far. Like that's. I don't think nobody's had But that. it wasn't that because, long ago we were saying, well, maybe they can make a run because they had beaten Boston. Well, a lot had, of in- injuries happened. Then, yeah. And that right. Has, it's a Donovan Mitchell more than anything. That's just hanging over the When you get situation. so used to playing one way, it really disjoints everything when you stop playing that way. And we saw that when LeBron was here, when he would leave, when he would oh, take games off, yeah. the whole thing unraveled. Right, right. And they're still really talented players, and they're really good players in their own right. But when you get used to doing it a certain way in a certain style – right which this team is now with Donovan, yeah. when you take that piece out, again, this was a really fun, young, good team before Donovan got here that had some growing up to do for yeah. sure, but talented pieces. This is still a very talented team, but when you get used to one guy driving the engine, 
When you pull that out and you say, okay, go, you got to go for five days or two weeks or whatever it is without them, it, 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 everything looks disjointed, and that's exactly where it's at right now. I heard somebody, I'm not going to say who it is, but I heard somebody talking yesterday, another media member saying that they were surprised that the Cavs couldn't do what they did with Mitchell with Darius. And I'm like, well, Darius is not Mitchell. I think there's some people that think that Darius is as good as Donovan Mitchell, and that's insane. No. There are definitely people out there who think that. Right? Is, yeah, it's, that's not a same That's thought. crazy. No, Donovan. Donovan got that. He got that dog in him when it's like, game on the line, give me the ball. Yeah. And I, if y'all don't want to do it, y'all don't want to win, give me the ball, I'll win it for us. I don't think they got that guy never outside of him. How many times? Donovan Mitchell's been to the All-Star game almost every year, right? I think he's a four-time All-Star. I'll double-check. Like, Donovan Mitchell is a top 30 NBA player. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right? 100%. He's top 15. Top, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't mean like he couldn't be higher. I'm just saying I'm thinking All-Star, top 30 players. Like, he's a perennial All-Star. Yeah. Darius Garland's a good NBA player. There's a big difference between that. Darius is not an All-Star. Darius has, the, All-Star, Darius the, has the skill set to be as good as anybody in the league. For some odd reason, he does. To be as good me, as anybody in the league, me, he got a great handle. He's got a good jumper. He could, he used to be able to finish really well at the rim. Like yeah, he, and he passes the you ball. He's a grip Jason? facilitator. Darius was on a trajectory a few years ago to being elite. Yeah, you think really? Yes, he had yeah. he, he, he had w- some. Kyrie I'm talking Irvin a couple years ago where he was on the select team and he was sort of being looked at as like of all the young up and coming yeah. point guards in the league, he was sort of viewed as is that guy and i think it's fair to say that you know that trajectory has changed or he's leveled off a little bit and i don't know if it's mm. the down on fa- i don't know what it is but where he was viewed when he signed that deal and where he was two three years ago yeah. compared to where he is now yeah it's different he's not even a top 10 point guard is he in the league no no and that's the point mike and i were making on the podcast a few yeah. weeks ago it's like everybody's saying get darius out of here trade him i'm like guys Dude. There's it. not a big, real big market for a point guard who's making the type of money that right. he is. Somebody told me. In a you, league flooded with point guards yeah. who's not playing well, like, what do you think you're going to get for him? If you traded him to San Antonio, him and Whitney would be amazing. Well, that's probably true. I don't hey. know what they give us, but. Yeah. Darius Garland, I think, is still going to have a, a really good, long, productive right. NBA career. But he's not going to be He's going to be a very good player for very long. I don't know. Maybe one day. You think so? I don't know. I'm not going to put a ceiling on him because a couple of years right. ago he was showing that type of – but, again, like Darius is a true point guard. Donovan yeah. is not. So it's not an apples-to-apples apples comparison. And we've said it 100 times, when your point guard is your best player on your team, it's really hard – to win championships, and everyone wants to point to Steph Curry and find okay. And Isaiah Thomas. And Steph had a ton two, around two him. Two of the best of all time. Yeah, and but aside from that, like if you just look through history, if your point guard is the best player on your team, it's really hard and not impossible, but it's harder to win championships. Aren't those the only two examples, Curry and Isaiah? Do you Unless think you want to consider Chauncey Billups better than Rasheed Wallace in 2004, but that's like that team was an anomaly. And that that, that was, was such an anomaly. <laughs> anomaly season. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they didn't have a great player on that team. They had a bunch of no. Good they're, players. they're the other anomaly to the you need a superstar to win a championship. By the way, you, real quick because you mentioned San Antonio, has the game passed Popovich by? Is it time for him to retire? No, it's the talent. Yeah, well, I just say he just well, got isn't he the guy picking the talent? No, no. But I'm just saying, like everyone thought he was He's the, the best young player in the game. Okay, what's I mean, he got to go with to him? They to get him, though. They have nothing yeah, what do you got to well, go with him? I mean, shouldn't he be de- – didn't he used to develop guys out of, the, out of left field? Yeah, but I mean, they Danny had... Green, they found Danny Green on – Tony they, Parker wasn't a high draft They pick. even released Danny a couple of times. Weren't Parker and Ginobili both not high draft Manu picks? was a second-round pick. Yeah. Yeah, but what? they also had Duncan. Now you can start developing guys around Wemby, and we'll see if he still has a touch. All right. Trying to do it when you have nobody. Popovich gets a pass from you guys. All right, fine. Uh, if you want to see Darius Garland and Karis LeVert and Marcus Morris tomorrow taking on the heat at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, you can buy tickets through the Game Time app. It is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets to any event in the greater Cleveland area. They have killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, create an account, redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. 
In the last five minutes, the Cleveland Guardians have announced that Shane Bieber will be their opening day starter for the fifth consecutive year, which is a new Cleveland Guardians record in his most recent spring training start against the Reds. He had a stellar outing, five and two-thirds innings pitched, one earned run, eight strikeouts. Bull, Jason, as our baseball guys, how confident are you that we'll see the, the, the elite eights version of Shane Bieber in 2024 as opposed to the not-so-great Shane Bieber we saw in 2023. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to health with him. He's got to be healthy. But if he's healthy, I think he's going to have a big year. He spent the winter at drive line, added a little bit more velo to his fastball again. I don't think he'll ever be 97-98 that he was throwing with the spider tack. I mean, he was one of the – he's a prime example guy if you want to look at what happened with where his velocity dropped. That had a lot to right. do with the, with the sticky stuff. Uh, I don't know if he's ever going to get back to those levels, but – you know, a couple ticks more makes a huge difference. So, and this is a big year for him. And there's a lot riding on the on the on his future and, and future earnings. He had opportunity to sign a long-term deal with the team, turned it down years ago, and here we are. It's his contract year, and uh, it's a big off. It's a big summer for him. It's a big season. I think you'll get. I don't know if you're going to get the best version of Shane, but I think it's going to be better than what we've seen in the last couple of years. How old is he now? I want to look it up. 20... 28. Ooh, he I was turns, going to say seven. He turns 29 on the last day of May. Okay. So, so it's basically but he's not his too age, old. But it's his age 29 old. year. Yeah, it's a huge season for his contract. Yeah. If he has a bad year this year, he's not getting a big contract. No. If he has a big year, he's going to get a good, a nice contract yeah. at the end of this year. Although he may, you know, we saw what happened with Blake Snell. Uh, I'm with you. I, I think if Shane Bieber's healthy, he's going to be very good. He'll be amongst the better pitchers in the American League. Do I expect him to win a Cy Young this year? I do not. But I, I expect him to pitch very well if he's healthy yep. and be one of the top, you know, 10, 15 pitchers. So I, I guess if I'm expecting him to be one of the top 10, 15 pitchers, why couldn't he be a Cy Young? Um, especially now that Garrett Cole's going to miss half the season. Do, no you, do you discount his Cy Young because it was the 2020 season and he only made what, how many um, starts? 12 starts yes. or whatever? Well, I shouldn't say I dis. I yes, technically based on the word discount. Yes, yeah. I, same thing. I think Bauer won it in the National League. I, to me, anybody that won an award in 2020, it's with an asterisk. Yeah, because being great for 60 games versus 162 is a massive difference. Yeah, yeah. Hi, so, how you doing? Yes. What's going on? You good? Yeah. Two days in now? a row, Tyvis has had to go pee in the middle of the show. That's a record. First person in the history of the show. Who knows, Tyvis? You might be replaced in those two minutes. That <laughs> you're going to the bathroom. We could have snuck Earl in here, and you could have lost your job. Never in those been two back minutes. in that seat again. <laughs> but uh, it was either that, it's it was either that or decide to just pee on myself. Yeah. Well, maybe which... you need to worry about the G. Bush has done that recently. Uh, <laughs> not here though. Uh, maybe you should start wearing like a diaper or something. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I did that. If I would pee on myself live on the set, yeah. it would take away from you puking on the set. It'd probably top that. It, I, yes. You'd be off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> off That's the hook. true. I would be. Uh, so, but yes, it, it, is, it is great that Bieber's pitching well. Uh, obviously, if he was healthy, he was going to be the opening day starter. It's not a surprise. The, the A's and that, Mike, do you have a list of all the opening day starters who's pitching for the A's? Is, is it uh, J.P. Sears? Give me a second. I don't think I don't they've announced ready. yet. I don't. Think I thought all the teams were announcing today. I thought Major League Baseball wanted it out there. Oh um, well, it's not, might not. I, I'm not sure about that. But I don't see anything from the eight. It's also 9 a.m. on the West right. Coast. Maybe they have. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Oh you know, no, they did announce it. Alex Wood. Wow. Oh, so my lineup is right. Yours is wrong. Damn it. Uh, but you know, uh, an interesting component to the whole Bieber thing is he's he's rep by Drew Rosenhaus, who obviously is a huge football. Right. But they don't have No, much. Alex Wood's a lefty also. Oh, is he? I yeah. thought he was a right. Yeah, Alex Wood's also a lefty. Yeah. Remember when you said... Uh, yeah, sorry. He's right. But but he's rep by Rosenhaus, who obviously has a huge football client yes. base. right. Shane's their biggest baseball client. So there's a lot riding on this for Shane and also for the Drew Rosenhaus agency in terms of baseball players. He's their, he's their gold standard. So this is a big contract. Yeah. And well, the, Guardi and the Guardians are not going to pay. It. No. No, they're not. <laughs> this is his last year in Cleveland. Uh, by the way, he may not be here in July. Uh, by the way, I, so, would, so I our, wouldn't. Would I Tristan wouldn't. McKenzie be our ace? Or Gavin Ivy Williams. or Williams? Williams. We've got to see how this season goes. Yeah. Uh, at this point, honestly, if I were the Guardians, I wouldn't want to pay him. 
I don't. I don't know if the Guardians will ever hand out another long-term extension to a pitcher. Unless why would you? Because they all unless it, the, young the only way they would do it is if it was like a situation where they're signing them, like before they're even in the majors, and you get it for such a bargain. But they won't. They haven't even done even that's risky. They haven't done any of no. those deals. They don't no. like to. They've they. Well, they haven't even done a deal like that with a hitter. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now. They're certainly not yeah. going to do with a pitcher. Like I think if if you're the Guardians, you're approaching this as. You've got the six years of control, the seventh if you manipulate the service time. You, so you got them for seven years. We're probably going to trade them. The sweet spot is with two. They like to trade guys with two years left and, and maximize the return. Yeah. So you look at this going in, and you know, okay, Gavin Williams, he's a Boris client. We weren't going to sign him anyway. We're definitely not signing him now. Yep. you got five years with Gavin Williams. You know that right yeah. now today. Well, but Bieber's you've got five the last years. year. Because he got As hurt. As did Lindor. If, if Bieber didn't get hurt last yeah. year – he would have been dealt. And Lindor got to the last year because of yeah. COVID. Lindor got to the last year because of COVID. Uh, but but by and large, they like to trade these guys with two years left. Bieber will very likely be traded during the season. Unless they're in first place. And even then, we they could. We have seen the Guardians they in have. the past they trade did it with Bauer. pitchers. They did it with Bauer. Now, if they <laughs> traded him during the season, Boy, it was... would be one of these trades where you get a pitcher back and get some prospects. And I know fans don't want to hear it, and I don't blame them because you sh- if Bieber's having a great year and the Guardians are in first place, they should absolutely not trade him. But if if they're like last year where they're kind of middling. Oh, know, if it's last year, he's gone. 100% gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, Especially if he's having a good year. Like, and, right, because they'll and, get a good return for him. And people railed against it in the moment, and I get it, and, and maybe I'm way off on this. I think Kyle Manzardo is going to be a really good major league player. Well, it was a smart it was a smart trade looking back. And it was but, a trade that they could not have done right. at any other moment now, except still, right in that moment. He still has to do now, it. Now, I don't blame fans for being skeptical. Absolutely. Because the Guardians, by the way, they sent ch- him down to the minors yesterday. Well, and I, <laughs> I knew that. We told you that was going to happen. Well, I know that, but... It still doesn't make it right. It's no, but it's the, <laughs> it goes back to the service time manipulation. Right, which is don't make it right. It's just baseball was was trying to fix that. They've got to still work on it, and I think the solution to that, as I've said for years, without you know, you'd have to dive into it to get the exact numbers. But you draft a guy out of high school, you got him for ten years. You draft a guy out of college, you got him for eight. You know, whatever. What I forget the exact number. And this, whether he's in the minors or majors. Now, yeah. that might lead to guys being rushed, which could be a negative, but we'd never have this, oh, we got to keep him in the minors right. for service time nonsense anymore. That well, wouldn't well, happen. Well, the Guardians are going to get burned by the new system because Tanner Bybee, finishing second rookie of the year, got an extra bump in service time. Well, So that clock speeds up. Yeah. Is, so, is yeah. Uh, Miles Straw starting center field? No. It should be the louder. It's not going to be, but it should be. He's no. not going to make the team either. No. Who? Oh. Chase the louder. Uh, it should be him. Though. Be, I was I, looking I, at I, the Guardians. So Miles Straw gonna pull it off? It's gonna be no. It's I think it's gonna be Esteban Florial. I, uh, I was I was well. I don't know. He's had a bad camp. He's had a bad camp. <laughs> um, yeah. I think Straw is gonna play less, but we're still gonna see him out there. Of course. Yeah. He's uh, on the roster. He's making I five think million. He'll, my guess is he plays again. He'll he'll definitely start against lefties. But I don't know. I, I I'm just hoping he doesn't start. That contract, you know, for most teams wouldn't be a big deal, but they owe him like a guaranteed fourteen million after Whoa. this year for the next two. They owe they owe Miles Straw like six million next year, yeah, I know. seven million the year after that, and then the year after that, there's still a buyout that they're gonna have to do. That's one of the worst contracts they've signed. So you I go, mean, just a total. So you gonna be wearing his jersey a lot when he hit these home runs. He ain't gonna hit home runs. <laughs> what does he have? One home run the last two seasons? He has six in his career. Six in his career. That's, that is, is bad. I could hit six home runs in the majors. Terrible. Come on. No, I'm kidding. That's of course terrible. I'm He's played a hundred. He has a hundred. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> he has one thousand seven hundred and sixty at bats. Six home runs. He's got to have the worst home has run he, ratio of any. Has of he been working on it this all season? This he put like, on allegedly put on. Jason, you were out there. Yeah. Put on ten pounds of muscle. Good luck. <laughs> I mean, they all say that. Good but, it, but I mean, the, in, the Indians, I know that's the first time I've done that in a while. <laughs> the Guardians made clear to him, like, this is it. Like, you got to have a big, big offseason. And I never understood what that meant because by yeah. the time you figure out if he had a good offseason or not, it's too late. Yeah, well, what are know? they going to do? I mean, what are they going to cut him? Yeah, no. They I, should, I, they I should mean, just let the players juice. You think if he sucks again this year, <laughs> they might cut him and eat the last two years? No. 
You wouldn't want you wouldn't want to go watch more baseball if they was all juicy. I mean, they could they. This is <laughs> this is. I'm, I'm joking. Before anyone yeah. tries, could they just put HGH in his cafeteria meals? And if he gets suspended, <laughs> it's a win-win. Either he doesn't get caught and he hits home runs, oh or if he gets God. caught and suspended, you know, it's a win-win. It doesn't make. He would still not be good even with HGH. Wow, but, but it's not you a miracle go, cure. You it doesn't go make there. A scrub well, superstar. you're not going to cut him because. <laughs> He's still he's valuable as a fourth outfielder. He's not seven million valuable, but he's no. still but that, has value. Like, that's the crazy part is that you should have always known he was a fourth outfielder, and they've been using him as a starter for years. I know. So I'm hoping Stephen Vogt <coughs> turns the tide and doesn't start. But you got to have somebody. You got a better alternative in front of him, and if they're not going to anybody's they, a better alternative. Well, uh, Florial's had a terrible camp. I, I th- know, but I, I, don't, I, I, I th- when I was out there, I thought give him a shot. I thought they are looking at this as they need Florial to take this job. Give him a shot. I don't care that he's had a bad spring. Yeah. Give him a shot. Let's see what he's got. Yeah. Uh, you they know. need Oscar Gonzalez back. Who actually is having a decent camp for the Yankees. Is he? I didn't even look. Is he? Yeah. SpongeBob. He's not on the 40-man roster, so he's probably not going to be on the team. But uh, Speaking ahead. of steroids real quick. Yeah. So Tristan Thompson came back. He's played some games. <laughs> And he broke Donovan's nose in his first game back, which we haven't even talked about. He's dealing with the knee issue, and he'll play through the broken that. nose. Yeah. yeah, But Tristan Thompson broke Donovan's nose. It was Roy nose. Rage, is what you're saying? No, it's not. It just, it's funny. He comes back his first game. He has a uh, – it's completely incidental. He, uh, How do you know it's not Roy Mike, Rage? Mike, he almost got hung on a dunk. I'm not hearing it. The man I'm not saying anything other was than his wide first open game back after the suspension. He broke their best player's nose. off the roids, maybe. Yeah. He dunk anymore. It's over with. Are right, you guys ready to play a little round of what's more likely to wrap up today's show? Nothing else on the Guardians. That's Anything it else? for Final now. Thoughts? By the way, the Ultimate Guardian Show on Monday, 3 p.m. Zach Mizell and myself. Why did I just call him Mizell? I don't know. Measle. I've called him Zach Mizell a thousand, a thousand times. I just said Zach Mizell. It's his new nickname, Black and White Zach Mizell, because we don't have him in color. There we go. So in color, he's Zach Mizell, and black and white, he's Zach Mizell. Done. Mm. Also, if you want to sign up for the UCSS newsletter, text newsletter to the number on the bottom of the screen, 216-435-1590. Sign up for a newsletter that's What is the UCSS newsletter? Uh, it's going to be a review of what we did that week. Oh. So in case you missed it and don't know how to search YouTube, it'll be in one place for you. All right. There you go. So if you want to be part of that, you can All right, so we got a number. new game. It's not a new game. It's just a round of what's more likely. Okay, we played okay. it before. You guys know how it works. Right. I give you two options. You tell me what's more likely. Okay. Some of these are straight team to team, player to player. Others are a little cross sports. You got any sports. baseball or is this all football? No, it's a little cross sports. There's okay. some basketball, baseball crossover. All right. There's okay. some that like are just it. football, but there are six of these. And you know how it works. I give you two options. You tell me what's more likely. Let's start with the first one. What's more likely in 2024? Deshaun Watson throws for 34 touchdowns or fewer than 10? 34 would be second most in the NFL in 2023. 10 is obviously fewer than 10. Less than 10. What's more likely to happen? Well, with the new This off- one seems pretty obvious. With the new one offense that they roll in, it, it better be the first one. Right, but what's more likely is clearly the under 10 because he's... The he's, injury concern more he's than He's unfortunately more likely to get hurt than throw for more touchdowns than any quarterback in the league or almost any quarterback. 34 would have been second last year? Would have been second. Second he, was 33, so it would be one more than second place last year, which is just two touchdowns per game. Who I was think. 33, do you know? Uh, give me, I'll pull it back up. Give me Justin Herbert. No. Who led the league? No, Josh, second. Uh, Josh Allen. Josh Allen, right. Second in touchdown passes last season with 33 was Jordan Love. Really? And Brock Purdy at 31. Jared Goff had 30. And Dak Prescott had 36. Josh Allen only had 29. Oh. Well, Josh Allen had he like ran 15 for, He ran for like 18, yeah. yeah. If Brock Purdy can throw for 31, this man can throw for 34. Okay. Where you going? That's my point. So which one are you going? Yeah. Right. <laughs> where you going? Maybe it's not as easy as I thought. I said the first one. I'm sticking to it. I mean, this... It's it's more injury than ineffectiveness for me. <laughs> yeah, in terms if he of plays the, the whole one. season, he'll throw more than ten touchdowns. Yeah, I mean any uh, quarterback that plays the whole season. Well, that's why I'm, I'm going. Give me the I'm a, first one. I'm Give assuming the first, he's right. playing the whole season. Give me the first one. It was a better question than I initially uh, thought. <laughs> Are you going no, with the under ten? Bull. You going? I'm under going with 10? the under ten. Unfortunately, I, honestly, Purdy's what swung me. Brock Purdy can throw thirty one touchdowns. <laughs> throw thirty four. <laughs> Browns have a good offense. They got a really good offense. Oh, man. They should be negative able to. about Brock Purdy. 
No. No, Jay, he's Jay fine. loves them. He's fine. Oh, the God. Browns, if Deshaun's healthy, the Browns should score a ton of points next season. I agree. With all the weapons they have in the passing game, with Deshaun playing at the level we hope we can all get back to, with a helpful, hopefully help, healthy I Nick mean, Chubb. you got to take it down a notch of all the weapons, okay? <laughs> they have good weapons. Amari Cooper is the only player on the Browns that has had 1,000 thousand yards, and that's not a high bar. Right. Yeah. He's Granted. the only player that's had 1,000 yards. That's fair. Receiving. It's a good <laughs> group of weapons. Okay, but let's not get carried away like they have all these superstars. I mean, superstars. I, I didn't say it was the Bengals' crop of receivers right there. I said with all the weapons they have. I mean, I, I, I think the offense... The offense tra- is good. The There's offense, a lot of talent. Were, the offense they were trying to run last year, when it's executed properly, as we've seen, pretty good offense. Um, I'm giving the 34. Okay. Give let's me go. 34. Next one. That was a good one. All right. There's 14 NBA games left for the Cavs before the end of the regular season. So these two options are before the start of the postseason. Oh, I blew this. Well, you did the same question a few weeks after the All-Star break. And you did not do very good on your Oh, no, yeah. These. I was terrible. So this is in one of the next 14 games. Yeah. More likely to happen. Darius hits nine threes in a game, or Isaac scores 30 points. <laughs> one of the remaining 14 games is more likely. How many players have hit nine threes in a game this year, period? And in the Darius league. has hit eight twice. Yeah, probably more than you think. Yeah, more oh, yeah? Than, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the exact go number, Darius. but it's not. Of course, I'm not scoring 30. I'm His go career with, high is 32. I'm, I'm going with Darius. Okoro's, didn't he set Okoro's that this year? 32? Didn't he set he did. that this year? No, it was against Phoenix two years ago. Oh. Oh, Garland nine threes. Darius. I would say Darius nine threes, although you get one of those late games, <laughs> late, late in the year, last one or two games. Hmm. Weird, weird things happen in the NBA. That's true. Jordan McRae scored like but 40. But would he be playing in those games, Okoro? He's enough of the part of their rotation. Yeah, you still got to roll dudes out. You still yeah. got to play the games. That's when – I thought you were going to ask about uh, Imani Bates in that, that one. No, G's not here. I don't, there's no point asking Imani Bates <laughs> question that's true. G's he's, not that's, here. A, that's only for G. Uh, yeah. Also, 20 different – Occurrences. Some players have done it twice, like Steph, but 20 different times this season of players hit nine threes in the game. At least nine threes. I actually thought that number would be higher. Sam Hauser hit 10 threes over the weekend. Man. The Celtics. 10 for 12. 30 some points. All right, next. All right. Boy, you'll like this one. This is the Bulls special. Will the Guardians starting outfield combine for 45 or more home runs this season? <laughs> fewer than 15. The starting outfield, so that <laughs> starting outfield. We don't even know what the starting outfield is. Well, that's why you have to pick. <laughs> so the guy. So we're saying that for over 162 games, the guy who starts each game, yes. even if it's a different guy each game, yes. So they will, will they combine to hit 15 home runs? More than 45 or fewer than 15? Oh, more than 45? Or, there's no chance they're hitting more than 45. <laughs> well, Quan. <laughs> Best case scenario for Quan, 10? 10, 8 to 10. Absolute 10. best case is 10. Yeah, 10. Miles Straw. Miles Straw is going to hit none. Man, he's not going to play every day. Okay, Ramon Laureano is going to hit 15, maybe. Best case scenario. That's 25. That's 25. Best case scenario. Uh, and then what's the best case scenario with Floreal? 20? But those, but you're going to see, I'm trying to think. Is any... Is anybody on the Guardians in the outfield going to hit 20 home runs? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Who's going to lead the outfield in home runs is your guess? Steven Kwan. The louder. I was going to say Chase DeLouder, oh, maybe. I mean, it got Maybe. Yeah, I guess you can't. You're I not going to get to 45. I guess you're not going to get to 45. Well, but under 15. But under 15. <laughs> give me the uh, 45. Uh, I'm going to give you. <laughs> What's the under, like. Okay, let's say Stephen Kwan hits five. Let's say they play Miles Straw more often. He hits zero. Now nah, I'll have to go. I, you know what? I'm with you. Yeah. I think forty. I, I think both are unlikely. I mean, what if they make a trade? What if they? What if they make a trade at the? No, I'm, I'm serious. They could have just a, signed Adam Duvall for three million dollars. <laughs> He'd hit more home runs than any outfielder they've had in a decade. They could. He just signed with the Braves for a, like. Three million, yeah. four million. I'm, Why not sign yeah. him? I'm Put him sure. in center field. I'm pretty sure Ohio State's collective payroll is better than the Guardians. You want to know why they didn't sign him? Why? I, I'm I'm being serious. I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> they looked at this as they tried going the free agent route with Josh Bell and Zanino, but in this instance, Josh Bell, it yeah. blew up in their face. It was a disaster. 
and it cost them Nolan Jones. Now, I would push back on that and say Josh Bell did not cost you Nolan Jones. They're two different yeah, positions. That's, that's ridiculous and an embarrassing but, but, take by this. But the thought is because we went the free agency route, we had to make quicker decisions on our own guys, and we can't miss on our own guys. Hey, Jason. So I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm just telling you. <laughs> that's, that's I'm not saying I'm buying it. I'm not yeah. saying I support it. I'm just telling you okay. that they feel like we have to look at our own guys, which is what they did two years ago, and we have to make decisions on our own guys, and we have to get that right before we go into free agency. Well, that what there's nobody – on their 40-man roster that they couldn't get rid of for Adam Duvall? <coughs> no, they don't want they to take the bats away from, from their guys is what well, I'm saying. So none of their no, – so what – No, I agree with you. Like, I mean – I agree with you. I mean, that's just crazy. And and unlike Bell, they would have to pay Duvall nothing. 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 Uh, it's, I don't know. I feel like what? you're very upset right now. Because they got – I love their pitching, and if they just did it just it just of It's bats. just odd that for an organization that – pinches every dollar that they yeah. do the hedges contract the loriano contract the barlow contract right that's like 20 million dollars they're there. just outliers that like you're like well wait a minute like yeah. is scott barlow really worth seven million dollars <laughs> he's not closing for you no like i like scott barlow yeah, but I if too. you're pitching pennies then why are you doing that and and the loriano contract the straw contract the hedges con there's a couple of them that you're like well that doesn't make any sense no so no so it's frustrating because i want the guardians to do well but, uh, all right, but anyway, so I'll, but I will go over the 45 because under 15 is just too crazy. If I made it 20, would it change your mind? Maybe. If I 25. 20. 25, I would, I would take the under. Yeah, I mean, I, it's possible that the Guardians will have no outfielder with 10 home runs. That's possible. Unlikely, but not impossible. Not impossible. Who's 100% certain to get 10 home runs? Miles Straw. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't get 10 home runs. He won 10 home runs in his career. He stood on second base. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, All right. Would <laughs> Miles Straw hit 10 home runs if he was able to hit from second base? Maybe. Maybe. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> the on that stuff. Uh, Bull, you're going to get us. I love that. What are we going to get? So I'm going to get you what? <laughs> That's so mean. Now watch the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian show, baby. <laughs> I am, I, despite my aggravation with the lineup, I am excited about the start of the season. I am I'm excited to do a show with Zach. I'm very excited about that. Zach's great. And I'm very optimistic about the pitching staff. And the only reason I have hope for the team in the division is because the division, is, I don't think, is that good. I saw the scouts talking up the Twins that the Twins were going to have this thing wrapped up by uh, the All-Star I break. I don't buy that either. I think, like, and, and we just got done hammering them, yeah. but I, this could easily flip again. To where it was two years hey, ago. Hey, if the Guardians get some good luck with some hit hitters. Stay healthy, yeah. They need a couple of guys to emerge to and develop. They need a couple That's of guys it. to hit. Yeah. And, and they don't have to. Listen, the Guardians offense is not going to be great. But if they can be mediocre, then they can win the division. <laughs> with, a, with a mediocre offense, they can win the division. Because the Twins lost their best pitcher. Just let them juice. They traded away Polanco. By the way, their closers hurt. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, I have That's him. a big deal. It's a he. It's a he's going to miss quite a bit of time. Yeah, he. I mean, who knows? That could it was his elbow, I think. Right? No, oblique. Uh, bull. Bull. Just let him juice. That way we <laughs> can we can see all we can see all the hard runs we want. All right, three more. This is the last specific sport one before we do two crossovers. Yeah. We have never done a Jerry Judy. What's more likely? So what's more likely for Jerry Judy in twenty twenty four? Eleven hundred yards, or fewer than four hundred sixty seven, which would be a career low. So a career high or a career low? 467. It's what is his career? It's the lowest he's had in his career. So essentially, a career high for Judy or a career low? Career high, more likely. Career high. And I'm, I'm not, not even. I'm with you. Contract, I'm not even. I'm contract not even. year high. That was a bad. I don't like that question. Yeah. Like your bad. Your low number should have been higher than that. I was just just going career high, career. All right, we'll skip next one. You ready? Eleven Some crossovers. Yeah. What's more likely? Jose Ramirez hits 44 home runs this season, mm. or the Cavs win 10 games in the playoffs this year? Which means make to the Eastern Conference Finals when at least two games. means you're going to at least game six of the Conference Finals if you win ten games. Correct. Yeah. Or Jose going for a career high forty four home runs. Jose forty four. Jose forty four. <laughs> yeah, Jose. Yeah. What number would that have to have been to make you think more than once? I tried going. It's four over his career high. Fifty uh, five. Oh, for oh, I, any I was thinking, higher than that, I probably would have <laughs> done the Cavs. Any, yeah. I mean, that's hard. I don't think Jose has a very. I think Jose's got like a 
ten percent chance of hitting forty four home runs. Right, but, but I, I think, think the Cavs have like a one percent chance of winning ten <laughs> playoff games. His career high is thirty nine homers, so I went five over that. That still wasn't yeah. enough. Well, I, I looked at it the other way. I don't yeah. think this. I don't think they're winning ten playoff games. Right. So, I mean, unless you put just some absurd sixty three number, I probably would have taken Jose. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. I think there's like a one percent chance. If you would have bumped winning. the Cavs down to six, oh, I'll seven. I should care. Seven gets you to game, game seven, seven, seven of the of the conference semis. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'd have done seven. Yeah. Not ten. Okay. Ten, no way. My favorite one. This oh, might be boy. the favorite one I've ever come up with. Oh, my God. What's more likely to happen? Miles Straw hits seven home runs in 2024. The other one. Whatever it is. Or the Tyvis other one. makes a 53-man NFL roster again. <laughs> I'm going with Tyvis. I'll take Tyvis. I'm taking Tyvis. I'll take Tyvis. That's easy. That's the easy one. <laughs> because, Tyvis, how old are you, 30? 30. Listen, you never know. There's zero chance Miles Straw will hit seven home runs. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a 0.1 chance that Tyvis will be on a 53-man roster. I mean, we just saw. You know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, if I actually apply myself to like get back in shape, yeah, you can do I it. I swear I could make a 53-man roster. When's the last year you played? Tw- I did the CFL in 21. Last time you were in the NFL, 2020. Okay. Same so as you, the you guy and Aaron Lynch. Working out. Yeah. Aaron Lynch. There you go. I believe in Tyvis. More if, than I believe in Miles Straw. Can we change that to Straw seven home runs or Tyvis gets a workout with an NFL team? That's 100% Tyvis. Yeah. That's 100% Tyvis, yeah. Listen, I tell you, I dropped this, I dropped a good 15 pounds. And I, you know, I, I think I am going to start doing drills again just to, for not to try to make a comeback, but just to be in shape again. I think I'm going to start get my cliques back out and start doing drills and stuff. What if it's Miles seven home runs or Bull gets a workout with an NFL team? Oh, that would have been good. (laughs) 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 Or or Mike gets a workout with an NBA team. Yeah, Miles seven home runs, or Mike gets a look for the Cavs. Miles has a better better chance (laughs) than both of that. It's not even close. Uh, We got some super chats here, Bull. I'm gonna read them. We're gonna finish with. uh, We're gonna do for overtime. We'll we'll make it here. It's only 12:46. We're really early here. I know. Flew through some stuff today. Uh, Dontavious Winston says, "I'm still taking Watson over Baker even today." And he also says... Oh, and that may be fine, but <laughs> there's no debating. And people know where I stand on Baker. There's zero debate that Baker was the better quarterback last year. Oh, for sure. He was, yes. It's not even a discussion. But you know where Baker... And I, but we know what Baker's ceiling you know, is. Yes. You right. know how it's going to end. I, and again, you still believe that there's hope. I, I, Jay did tried he, to bring, did Jay, he throw a turnover against yes, the Lions? Yes, on he the game winning drive again. Jay tried to <laughs> stop. Jay Josh. brought this up a couple of weeks ago. Would you take the trade back? Yes, but I still <laughs> the Browns had to get a quarterback with a higher ceiling. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. All credit to Baker. He had a very good year, but that's his ceiling. Yeah. So, yep. But you can't. I mean, there th- we have fans here that will argue that Deshaun had a better year than Baker, which well, is Well, that's absurd. insane. That's, that's insane. insane. Go ahead. Uh, Dontavious also says Garland can't finish and his turnovers in the paint are bad. That's a fact. I will, well, he ain't finishing well this year. But the That's tur- true. The turnover, he only take care of the football when I got 100 basketball. grand on the – Oh, yeah, the basketball. <laughs> when I got – when I'm about to win 100 grand. That's the only What are you time. playing with there, by the way? These are rappers. I was wondering what you were doing. Oh, I'm just stacking them. M. M. Vine says, Darius had his jaw wired shut, lost a lot of weight. I think subconsciously he is very tentative about heavy contact for fear of injury. Uh, we, I, can I agree. we uh, wire Aaron Rodgers' mouth shut, maybe? He really you mean vice presidential that. candidate Aaron Rodgers? No, he's not. He's not. He's out of the mix there. But he was on some conspiracy theory podcast talking about all these crazy things like Flat Earth and all these wild, bizarre conspiracy theories. Go ahead. Uh, next up comes from Blue Aqua. Oh, yeah. I'm not – I hope – I don't even know what this means. Will Reno's affect acoustics like crack of the bat? What? Read it again? Will, will Reno's affect acoustics like crack of the bat? Anthony, read this just so you guys know I'm not crazy. No, he's reading it word for word. I have no idea I what it means. no idea um, what that means. <laughs> Thoughts? Well, re- somebody who goes to a lot of concerts, acoustics don't mean anything. Have fun. I don't know. 
I don't understand. I don't. That's Will not even Reno. He's Reno's R E N O S. So, Will Reno's affect acoustics like crack of bat. Does he mean arenas? Will arenas? <laughs> is that a Chinese proverb? I mean, what is happening here? I don't, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, yeah, I don't. I, I don't understand that. The I'm guy. Sorry. I, guy that's I think he, English. I, I think he. As the resident who time. cannot spell. Please double check your spelling before you submit All right, your keep super it chats. moving, Mike. Sorry. Uh, Casey Reach says the fact Trevor Bauer can't get a job is a joke. Would you like to address that, Paul? I mean, I loathe Trevor Bauer more than any athlete that I've covered here in Cleveland. Way more. I don't loathe Baker. I loathe Trevor Bauer. Loathe. Uh, I would get, if I were a team. I would. Give him an opportunity, even though I did, even though I disdain, have major disdain for him. But even though he's, I don't know if he's, has he been officially vindicated in the courts? Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Here's the problem, Jason, for some, for a lot of teams right now. Because if he was going to get a chance, it would have happened already. Yes. Because you could have signed him to a minor league contract. What he admitted to doing with these girls, even if consensual, is off-putting to a lot of people. He performed violent sex acts with women. Now, yeah. to me, what people do in the bedroom, as long as it's consensual, yeah, I, that's your business. Yeah. But even if it is consensual, there are a lot of people that find this distasteful. And so I think that's a factor here, whether, whether you... It, Obviously, some of it is people don't believe he's innocent. Right. But even if you do, it's a PR hit, and some teams don't think he's worth it. Yeah, I mean, NFL guys have been convicted of worse and gotten right. other opportunities. So right. it is it is a little odd that you tack no in one's giving him that Bauer's a older. Yeah. That he was never a popular teammate. Correct. Like a lot of guys don't like him. Correct. Even beyond this stuff, uh, he's been arrogant. He's been a bully. He's you know, and he's just got a bad reputation. If I were a team that needed a pitcher, I'd bring him in. But it does I'd speak, give him a chance. But it speaks to the difference. NFL, yeah. it's, can you help us win on Sunday? I don't care about anything else. Can you help us win on <laughs> Sunday? <laughs> well, <laughs> and the other, I, I leagues, the other leagues, well, at least baseball doesn't quite seem to operate that I, way. I, in I this think instance. he's an anomaly because there are other players that have gotten it. Araldis Chapman. I mean, Domingo Herman's back. Yeah, Araldis Chapman. Chapman. He, I mean, <laughs> Chapman was elite. <laughs> He's but he's weird. not anymore. He was <laughs> honking his mom. He's in his, wife, his mom's boobs. I, I think mean, it was his mom. Freaky. I think it was his mom. That's that disgusting. Man, I know. That man crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> you see, yes, as much as I – see, I like – people you say, oh, you don't like people. <laughs> I keep my personal out of it when it comes to decision-making. I would I – would, if I owned a team, I would consider giving Trevor Bauer an opportunity. He tweeted when Herman got signed. Did you see that? He tweeted like an LOL or something right, like right, that. Right, Bauer yeah. did. Like, he's I not mean, helping the, himself with that. No, though. I know. And the, but, and the Herman allegations were awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. But and part of back. it with part of it with Bauer is people don't like him to begin with. Right. And players – some players – some players like him. They do? Uh, Mike Clevenger, by the way, doesn't have a job either right now. That's amazing. That's amazing. Neither does Jordan Montgomery, who was the best pitcher in the World Series last year. Neither does JD J- J- Martinez. Guardians yes, could Blake use his Snow bat. Signed Guardians should sign JD Martinez right now to play DH. But they okay, won't, so we, we got some clarification. Reno's are renovations. So I think okay. Blue Aqua was asking, will the renovations at Progressive Field ah. affect the acoustics like the crack of the bat? Got it. How would we know that? <laughs> no. No, the answer is no. It's no. an outdoor state. Like yeah. open, like that part isn't changing. No, Reno. No, it, it would. The crack of the bat would sound. The Did same. they improve their sound system, or no? I don't know. Actually, they have a sound system. They changed the color. Of the Browns is terrible. That. They should let the Guardians use metal bats. Oh my god! There would be deaths. Death. Pitchers would die. Yeah. <laughs> there would be deaths. You'd have to put a net up, like you know, when they do batting practice. And the pitcher has a net in front of him. I think I've to told this that. story before. When they had the home run derby over All Star Weekend yeah. in Cleveland, yes. they, they had high school kids with aluminum bats, and I was on the home run porch. Like, <laughs> I mean, they were peppering the scoreboard. These were high school kids hitting the scoreboard at Progressive the ball Field, like two hundred miles an hour. Can you imagine Aaron Judge with a metal oh, bat? There would be homicide oh my charges. God. Can you give Aaron Judge an aluminum bat. 
Yeah. A composite two piece <laughs> aluminum bat. Oh my lord! But it yeah. would make the game exciting. It would make it dangerous. Would somebody dying on the mound be exciting? What, which which <laughs> death would occur first? <laughs> Mike's <laughs> idea of giving linemen knives for the tush push in Philly? Yeah. Or Tyvis' idea of giving aluminum bats to major leaguers? Uh, what will cause well, a quick death? Knives is a more direct path to death. <laughs> that would be scary, you know, as a pitcher. You he hit that thing. But you, can't, oh, you ain't going to get out there. You way. would be dead. You, you get hit in the head <laughs> off a metal bat, you're Game you're over. Dead. That's it. So one of my buddies from Texas is the analytics guy for the a and baseball team. And they have a kid, he's a sophomore this year, he'll be a top 10 pick in next year's draft name, Jace Lavalette. And they use aluminum bats in college. He shouldn't. He has like six Agreed. or seven home runs already that had an exit velo of like 128, 129 off a metal bat. In professionals, like John, uh, John Carlos Stanton hit one yeah. last year, like 118 is the fastest Well, did you see that stat? I Let me bring O'Neal this up. O'Neal Cruz has five home runs of 110 oh. miles an hour already. So. And, the, and the Guardians had three as a team last yeah. year. Uh, last super chat two. We got one from Reggie Glover. If Tyvis goes out for the Browns, I will buy his jersey that day. Ooh. I haven't worn a jersey in thirty years. I will wear a Tyvis jersey. jersey. We yeah. are all buying Tyvis yes. jerseys. And last one comes from Derek Parslow. What's more likely, Miles Straw hitting two home runs or Bull becoming RFK's junior vice president? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not even close. It's Miles Straw. Easy. RFK's an idiot. I'm not, I wouldn't be his vice president. I'd be, I'd be a great vice president. I'd be a great... I would be a way better president than half the presidents of my lifetime, I would say. Well, I'd be a great president because I would want everybody to be treated fairly. But you, you got to have the other two parts of the government that agrees. What? Yeah, well, let's not get into that. Politics is disgusting. <laughs> you, you're that, just bro. the guy on strings. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mike, is that it? That's it, yeah. We got four minutes to kill. What do you want to talk about? Uh, How's life? Kyle's life. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I just, I was mentioning this right before the show briefly. Uh, t- I got a TV recommendation for you. There's a show on Netflix called The Gentleman that I just finished watching last night. Very good show. Funny. Well acted. Who's in that? Because uh, I thought that's been out for a while. No, am I It was mistaken? a movie about seven, eight years ago called The Gentleman. Space, same guy wrote it, Guy Ritchie. Was that the Matthew McConaughey movie? Yes. That's been on Netflix for a while. It was, and I think it's off now. But, okay. But this is a new show. It just came out. Okay. But it's really good. It's, if, if, you, if you know Guy Ritchie's movies, or you'll, and if you like his stuff, then you'll love this show. It was great. The, does, did anybody watch the second season of White Lotus? I'm sh- assuming you did not. I never watched the first good. season. Very, very good. White so the star Lotus. of this of this show is, you know the you know those two, Mike the two couples that were hanging out together. Yeah. The husband who was like obnoxious tall guy. Yeah, yeah. He's British in real life. I didn't realize that. He's and he is the star of this show. It takes place in England. It's really good. Very entertaining. A lot of action. It's gory. So you know. Oh, my wife would be into that. Your wife likes Corey? Yeah. White what did Lotus? I recommend for your wife that she liked? Dr. Death. Yes. Did she watch both seasons? I think so. Well, if she likes the gore, then uh, <laughs> this it was good. I mean, there's some gore, but it's, it's a really good show. What is it, White Lotus? Well, White Lotus is great. No, but I was talking about The Gentleman. Oh, The Gentleman. The Gentleman's on Netflix. White Lotus is on, on HBO Max. It's gory. Well, there there is some gory in it. That's not the... The crux of it, but there is some goriness. I'm gonna, uh, che- I'm gonna check it out today. Within it, check it out. Tokyo Vice. Oh, I meant to tell everybody. I went out, so you know, I Buckeye Cruise. Yeah, I did. They auctioned my me off. Yeah, auctioned you auctioned off. Auctioned you <laughs> off. What? What is happening so, here? Right? That's inappropriate. I gotta say it like so. Yeah. I got a package that they all yeah. auctioned off me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting worse. It's not better. Please clarify. <laughs> Auction y'all, off time is passing. Please clarify quickly. Y'all, y'all, y'all sick. Me and my wife is a package. You can have dinner with me and my wife. Dinner with oh, you and dinner. Your wife. Oh, dinner. Okay. Anything else? Wife. Just yes. dinner? Yes. And we ended up doing ours yesterday with yeah. some people. And nice some, people or yeah, they weird? some really good people. I guess we if were, they were weird, you would And know. I had it. Well, the, the point of the story is I had, yeah. we went to Hyde Park. I had the Australian, Australian Wagyu filet. 
and I was sitting there eating, and I thought about Ja yesterday, and I said, <laughs> he just don't know how good filet. this filet is. Only skinny people order filets. It, you know what's funny? Everybody at the table ordered filets. Everybody. But you're skinny people. Oh, filet's phenomenal. What's wrong with filet? Thank you. Jason, come they on. Like the, they, like the fat, they like They like fat and stuff. Oh, <laughs> I, I would take a filet over a ribeye every day oh, of the week. Yes. Every day of the Jason, week. Jason yes. Is, uh, yes. Medium what rare. What was you yesterday? Yeah. Medium rare. Nice medium sear rare. on the outside. Ugh. John Fanta just texted me and said that's the worst take you've ever had, Jason. Oh, my God. So you know. uh, that is very disappointing. Filet? Jason. Medium rare? We, we filet, got is so filet is the you best You missed it cut. yesterday. It's not even close. It's the best cut. Bye, everybody go to the Swinging Door Lounge this Sunday. The Some of the money... Whoa. Some of the money <laughs> is going to raise money for Rocky River Little League. You Swing get time as this package at the swing. <laughs> at the Swinging Door. See ya. <laughs> it got worse. Overtime coming up.